Welcome to Moonbase 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Moonbase 2 podcast. My name is Decade Andy. I've been rebranded like a like a box of Starburst into Opal Fruits. No, the other way around. Opal Fruits into Starburst. I'm still the same old Andy. I'm just more rotten on the outside. Uh, and I'm joined here, as ever, by the man we know and love as Mikey. Hello, Mikey. Honore Decado! No, wrong, wrong Decado. <laughs> I'm, I'm still pleased that I did that one. You, unfortunately, you're not the first. <laughs> you're not the first. Was Matt was Matt? the first. I, yeah, yeah. Was it Matt? <laughs> it was Matt. To be fair, when I when I was uh, coming up with different names, uh, mm. when I said Decade, uh, I was thinking, hmm, Kamen Rider says that too. Or at least, uh, you know, Decade did. I was like, oh, yeah. oh, well, what can you do? Decade <laughs> and Decade are very similar sounding. It's one of those so fun English-sounding words, which I'm so sure when learning languages, if you're not English, is a pain in the ass. Oh, I can imagine. Like much of English, I'm sure. <laughs> Apparently, English is one of the hardest languages to learn because we don't have a lot of the same uh, structure and pronouns that, uh, and approach to pronouns and grammar that a lot of languages do, especially um, yeah. European languages. Yeah, that's why we had to like dominate most of the world to spread it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> And we did quite well at it. Not specifically mm. us, but lots of uh, our English-speaking peoples. Yeah. Hey-ho, there you go. Uh, Mikey, how are you doing this week? We are a little bit late. Uh, we've yep. had some uh, delays and whatnot, but hey, we're here. Yo. Yep. I was in traffic for a very long time. Oh, my God. That I didn't kill funny. anyone, I promise. Oh. Oh, I'm going to be sad. Someone just posted over the garden wall theme on you on YouTube. Oh, no. Close it. Close it. I'm actually going to cry. Oh. Was it was it George? I don't know. I didn't catch the name, but I'm actually... Oh, over the garden wall. Oh, God. It's been a long time, but it's still emotionally affecting. I, I need to rewatch it over the garden wall. Oh. I keep meaning to. They're uh, all really dead. Really good show. They're all fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I know there are other theories, but they're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of those, uh, I think it was one of the, the last, like, non-action-y shows that I tried, which I really enjoyed. Mm, it's um, a unique animal. Like, there's been a couple, like, I tried Infinity Train a little while mm. ago. I haven't seen a lot of it, but it's 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 kind of aiming for the same ballpark, but I, I think I'd have to go deeper into it to get the same out of it. Okay. I, um, I hear that the, the, uh, the Owl House has been cancelled as well. Yeah, fuck them. I like the yeah. Owl House a lot. Owl House was really good. Um, was, it, they... was it on Cartoon Network? Uh, Disney, I think. Oh, well, I'm actually surprised. I thought you were going to mm. say, yeah, it was Cartoon Network, and I was going to be like, wow, it's another victim. Fantastic. Uh, wow. Are you telling me, Andy, that the Cartoon Network cancels good shows? I'm saying Cartoon Network, just anything that isn't... Um... <laughs> Adventure Titans Time go. gets nuked. No, no, anything that isn't Teen Titans Go now, Adventure Time got cancelled. That's true. Well, <laughs> no, no, it didn't get. To be fair, it didn't That's get cancelled. It got to think. finish. That's what they want you to think. I know. I'm pretty sure Adventure Time finished because that had been on for a long time. And before Teen Titans Go, that was the go to. Teen Titans Go Season 7, Episode 19 is it, the most hurts. recent one to air. That and hurts. know how you know that? Because in the next week, Cartoon Network will air seasons one to seven multiple <laughs> times. Uh... Occasionally interspersed with a rerun of Steven Universe. Oh, good, good, good. And then good. occasionally a creator will come in and say, I have this. And they'll say, yeah, we'll put it on. No toys. You didn't make any toys. No toys. No toys. And they kill it. Netflix is literally the only place you can get new ideas. Well, it feels like it's the only place you can get new ideas for shows, and even then, they're they're starting to. I think they're tar- starting to pigeonhole themselves a bit. Yeah, yeah. I-, I would say most of the shows I've seen from Netflix, cartoon wise, have not been ones I've particularly enjoyed. Personally, looking looking back, Dragon Prince is the only one I think holds up because yeah. like I had that initial like reaction of like, "Wow, a Netflix cartoons, they're amazing," and this will be relevant later, mm. but um. Going back and trying to rewatch stuff, a lot of Netflix like shows in general, um, their original properties anyway. I find that 
they don't hold up. Like, Dragon Prince, I think, works fine. Like, the worst thing about Dragon Prince is that early animation. Yeah, it's really rough. But, you know, better, yeah, because the, the creators realized they fucked up, Um, to be blunt. But, uh, like, I yeah. think they probably had a bit more money to maybe spend on the oh yeah yeah the budget uh, the the animation well they definitely had in. they definitely had more past the pilot than Christ yes um, yeah, definitely but yeah like I also think like I'm gonna mention this again later I think the f- the binge release format is is not work also, oh no yeah. I you know I tell her like Camp Cretaceous largely oh, is that holds Netflix up. yeah you, that ge- you generally yeah. like that show it's not perfect and it's got problems but it is it generally holds up a lot better than a lot of stuff hmm. Um, you know, but anyway. I think we, I think we missed out that we didn't get like a '90s Jurassic Park cartoon. You we, know, with uh oh, what what was the the toy line that they uh, they continued on after? Oh, the um, the Ra- Chaos Raiders? Effect, Chaos Effect. Oh, that would have been cool as well. I was I was hmm. thinking before Chaos Effect, I was thinking about the the human villain uh, villains like. Oh the, um, yeah, the, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. It, it, oh. it wasn't the the radical oh. raiders. It was something what, what else. JP Toys, you will tell me. It wasn't Dinosaur Hunters either. No, it was, some, no. it was something really like 90s dumb. Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park. Okay, Archive. Okay, there was a direct... JPToys.com, by the way, for anyone who ever wants to check up Jurassic Park toys. Um, toy database, Jurassic Park. Okay. Oh, it was just Series 2, they called it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was just... um. Yeah, and it had the, a bunch of the Hunter human lines and new 70 dinosaurs and a lot of repaints. Yeah, because you could have easily done them as the main villain, you know, and you, the 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 nineties heroes has to stop the the mm-hmm. poaching of the dinosaurs, etc., well, etc. There was a nineties cartoon in the works. Oh, I'm sure. Well, there was a nine, well, eighties um, and nineties aliens cartoon as yeah, well. It, it was, uh, yeah, but this was intended to be aimed at a much older audience than like the Robocops or oh, really? that kind oh. of stuff. Um, and they had the the basic story was go- there's, there's um concept art and stuff out there for it. Uh, basic yeah. story was that they were going to try and go back to the island and basically do the lost world and study the dinosaurs. Ah right, okay. And like the main villain would have been Rexy, and they would then they did introduce the main human villain later on. But um and like there would have been like a sidekick dinosaur and whatnot. But like of it was, they were going like oh we want to make it more mature like more like the Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Ah yeah yeah. Mm, which I suppose would have stepped at the toe. It was of the thirteen episodes of Cadillacs and Dinosaurs that came out. Would it? Because would it have been out at the same time? No, I think Cadillacs was cancelled by then. Yeah, and um, Cadillacs is a much older property as well, technically. Yeah. Oh God, much like mid. There, do you know he's still planning on b- bringing out more books of that? Really? Yeah. He's um. He said he's, he's had been working on in... that stuff since like what sixties or the seventies. He did it in uh, newspapers late, or something. I think it's like late seventies, early eighties. Yeah, it's really old. Like, but he he's got no release schedule. He just releases when he wants. Oh, because he he's, he he largely publishes independent. So. Oh, well, that, that's not bad. Oh, not, wow. wow, wow. Yeah. Uh we're not here to talk about Cadillacs and dinosaurs, or just dinosaurs in general. And my though. unambiguous like cartoon crush on Hannah Dundee. That's the, the that's the lady, isn't it? Yeah, that was the first. That was the first. That ever, you know, ever, like. I, I was at a TF Nation one for a large drunk of very a large group of very drunk ladies, a drunk of ladies, if you will. Okay. Uh, got together and started talking about their cartoon crushes, and I was just like, ah, I've never done that. <laughs> Did anyone actually believe you? <laughs> well, they thought that like the weird laugh was probably a giveaway, but okay. mm-hmm. Hannah Dundee sitting right. sitting at my godmother's house watching Sky TV because she's the only one in the area who had Sky, <laughs> and like put on the children's channel. Cadillacs and dinosaurs came in. Her her husband comes in and says, "Like she's not wearing much," and I distinctly remember, "Like get out, <laughs> <laughs> leave. leave, leave, take the dog with you." Did she have uh, the nineties thing going on with like the black hair and the blue highlights to show the the yeah. shadow effect, like yeah, Venom, yeah. but yeah. made more sense. Venom was weird because he had red as well. That's the I thing. Remember. Yeah, Ven- Venom was split down the middle. <laughs> yeah. I remember I asked her, our buddy Diamuch if he knew like what the reason was. And he's like, oh. Because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense why you'd have one side blue and one side red. Yeah. Unless they were trying to make him 3D. And I don't think they were. You know, with the 3D glasses. No, no, that was... And even then, that's not even how that works. Yeah, yeah like... Of course, Spider-Man had weird 3D effects, didn't it? Didn't it, it did, yeah. Mm. yeah. Spider-Man had a... I, 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 in my mind, I still really like the Spider-Man animated 90s show, but it is 
I remember trying to go back like maybe a few mm. years ago and watch the first few episodes and I was just like, oh god, this animation. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. It's and unforgivably they can, bad. He's not allowed to punch someone and they've reused so much footage. That's the problem. I, I don't mind that he can't, you know, punch people and stuff like that. That's not a big issue for me because he's got the webs and he can do yeah. that. But it does, the, th- the thing that kept that going, like the writing is good. That's the thing, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I, I'll never forget the episode they did where he um helped the dying child or took the dying like he oh man ma- yeah Madam Web was it Madam Web Madam Web said yes. like oh you need to help this child okay and oh I love Spider Man let's go and we and at, at, at the end of the show it's just like I I'm sure glad I got to meet that girl and she now knows who I am but we're gonna be <laughs> friends for years bottom just underneath him home for terminally ill children. These children are dying. You I like never the idea that Madam Web comes in. She died tomorrow, and he goes, "Oh, damn it!" <laughs> Don't worry, Peter. Your identity secret. She's she's dies tomorrow, and it's like, "Oh, oh no, no. Yeah. Peter, you weren't supposed to reveal your identity. You are supposed to cure oh, her." Oh no! Oh. <laughs> No, no I thought you, I thought you were gonna say something like you weren't meant to uh, show her your identity. I've made her disease terminal. Now. Oh, <laughs> it's no. Like no, Madam Web, no, Madam Web, why, Madam Web, what a bitch. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, that chair. that nineties cartoon had a lot of good stuff because it, it did Secret Wars as well, didn't it? Oh yeah, like yeah, that was like Marvel had like in the nineties was like kicking early, like kicking ass, like absolutely kicking because it had. Um, Secret Wars, it had mm-hmm. the Phoenix Saga, it had um, the Clone Wars, it had better Clone Wars, uh, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Like the you little mean in the like... actual comics, don't you? Because I don't think um, no, no, in the cartoons, they didn't do. Did they? Did they have um, Jackal? They didn't have Jackal in it. Not though. Jackal, they, they but they, it, right? they, they, because they, Jackal is stupid, so they took him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they then they turned it into a re- like. Oh, <laughs> apparently this is because the censors kept on telling them they couldn't kill anyone. Oh, okay. So they did the whole Mary Jane disappears and comes back. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because she fa- no, it was um, it wasn't Mary Jane. It was someone else. It, wasn't no, no, it, it was she Mary Jane. The portal. She, was she, she, she. It was Mary Jane. She disappeared. She came back and like for ten episodes. It's like we're getting married. We're gonna they're, like looking back. It's like weird Joe Casada vibe. We're getting married. La 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 la. la. And then it turns out she's a clone. And then it oh, turns out she's right. a clone from Hydro Man. That's and right. And then she, she melts. fucking melts. That's right. Yeah. And at the end of the show, Mary Jane was in this. Was, was she in like the weird spot dimension or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Floating around. She got, she got uh, Peter. sucked through a, d- a dimensional thing, and then that's how the series ends. It's just like I think you deserve to find the real Mary Jane Watson. Thanks. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me this beforehand, you bitch? <laughs> After <laughs> meeting Stanley. Yeah. Because of course you did. <laughs> Yeah, and it was a good show. I mean, I it, it's not it's it's fair to say that it did, like all of the Marvel shows could not stand up to Batman. No, or the because Justice League. No, because it's Batman. But, I'll be honest; they couldn't stand up to Superman either because Superman is very good when it's good. Yeah, it's it's all like at worst it's competent, and it's yep. just like yeah, that was an okay story. It's not like nut busting, but it's like yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah. The animation's always on point. Yep, you can give that to it. And then, but then like. X Men is really fun until you get to that last season, but that's the um, thing, yeah. yeah. Which different uh, production company and a million other facts and figures, but oh, so, definitely, definitely. But yeah, it's a weird thing. Like, oh wow, I loved X Men. I and I loved X. I cried when Morph died. I still cry when Morph dies in Vertigo. But um, I just hated like him them reusing the same sound clip of him going, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like so many times. Wolverine, watch out! Oh. oh! <laughs> Every time Wolverine had an emotional moment. Wolverine, watch out! <laughs> Wolverine finds God. I mean, they they really tried to push the fact that Wolverine was in love with Jean Grey. Nah. Nah. He 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 was in love with Morph. Yeah. He was definitely gay for Morph. Definitely. 100%. 100%. Wolf- there is a comic where Wolverine, they, they strongly hinted Wolverine and Nightcrawler slept together. Really? I, I, which they got away with because they were like, they're drunk, and here's a panel of Nightcrawler <laughs> standing naked in a, in a bedroom door. And apparently no one in the editor's room noticed. <laughs> this is a real thing. Oh also, one editor wanted the Nightcrawler to have two dicks. Why? Uh, because it was the guy who wrote Marvel. Wh- when would that ever come up? It's the guy who wrote Marvel. Did Marvel have two dicks? Do you remember what Marvel was? Uh, he was a Cree. No, not that Marvel. Uh, Marvel. 
Mar or it's more pr probably more <laughs> pronounced like Marvel. I love how you have to say, do you remember which Marvel it is? It's like, is it the Cree one? No. No, no, it was a terrible uh, comic book. I don't remember then. The really bad, terrible comic book. Like, the, no. what, down, you don't, okay, this is interrupting the show, but we have fuck all news, so this is fine. But, <laughs> um, Mar because I had to fucking watch this, because someone said, look, they did a dinosaur thing, and then made me watch the Atop the Fort Wall episode on it. Um, oh. Marvel comic book, 2002, written by Bill Hem Hemez. Who also thought Nightcrawler had two dicks. Oh. So this is just a Wikipedia page. It is a, down as possibly the worst comic of all time. It does not know what dinosaurs or evolution are. And it was basically... <laughs> is this why it's the worst one? Because it, it, it annoys oh, no. your special. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fucking atrocious. I've and never it also seen has, this. It has the... I mean, I would... I, I rarely say this, but I would check out the Atop the Fort Wall breakdowns. They are an experience. Mm. Um... This comic came into being because Bill Hermes was in a fight with uh, Peter Davids. Okay. They, he was like the he's like the he was a big owner of um, Marvel at the time. Like he was the publisher. Um, uh, was he the publisher or the editor in chief? Da, 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 da. Vice president. He was vice president for four years, and uh, he described comic book people as basically you know if you're reading comics, you're sitting in your basement masturbating, and that is something he said on a real radio quote, and. He, like, he started, he worked with Joe Quesada a lot, and, uh, you know, that had mixed results. Um, and But then, Peter Davids, who was writing the Hulk at the time, in what's generally regarded as the, one of the best Hulk runs, like, really didn't like him, and this guy wanted to fire him. He Bill wanted to fire Peter Davids, mm. and he was just saying, I can write a better comic than you in five minutes. And it's like, okay, you write a comic, and I'll write a comic, and then whichever one gets the most critical acclaim wins. With the slight like undercurrent of I'll fuck you up, Peter, if you lose. <laughs> so he wrote this. This is his only comic book he's ever written, as far as I know. Right. And it is a fucking disaster. It starts off as a weird parody, and then turn like halfway through turns into this weird existential crisis where you meet God, hmm. and then talking about evolution and World War Three and. This is genuinely in the book. In the book, one of the big twists, Andy. Mm -hmm. God is black. Oh my god, that's so unbelievable! I guess and doesn't know what a fish is. Why doesn't he know what a fish is? He made it. He's a fucking idiot in this book. Okay. Um, and I think Peter. I don't know what Peter David's wrote, but I heard it got like decent reviews because he's a really talented writer and he wrote in like 10 minutes <laughs> ah but he, here's the question i was gonna ask you uh mm. when they say critical acclaim did they mean like positive or just critical no no you had to get good reviews you had uh, to, okay because like, i was gonna say maybe maybe this one got more critical acclaim because like more people were talking about it because it was bad like, maybe i mean it got more critical notice there you go that's that's the word i was looking for yeah um, maybe maybe that's the thing you, maybe you, you needed to way. you needed to write a real book that that was considered good. That w w it would be a best-selling comic. Mm. Um, the you decide event they called it. All right. Okay. So uh, you you know you the audience would decide which one of them had the bigger testes. Um, wow. Apparently, Nightcrawler did because you gave them four of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, just having more doesn't mean they're bigger. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it was P oh god, Peter David wasn't even writing his own book. It was writing um. Uh, Captain Marvel. Hmm. And Ron Zimmerman got dragged into this writing Ultimate Adventures, which is a book I've never heard of, but I don't care. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and Joe Quesada fell in as well, but again. Joe Quesada. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Marvel. Wow. Really yeah. do recommend checking out the Atop the Fort Wall video. Not a guy I'd usually watch, but it you'll learn what you need to know and you won't have to read the comic. But you I mean, that sounds dumb. like a plus. Yeah, so. Also, burn your brain afterwards, because it's so fucking <laughs> stupid. Ah, well, Mikey, we're here to talk about Transformers this week. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, like you said, there's not a huge amount, but we'll, we'll hmm. crack on through it with some third-party news, as we always do. Uh, with X Trans bots, uh, we've got two things coming. Uh, no, we've got a few listed, I suppose. Uh, X Trans bots MX V, which I assume is not a V but a five. Dante, or Dande, as the shark might say. Mm -hmm. MX VI or six. Uh, da Vinci, and MX uh, V. 
one one or i i which is uh, uh seven if i remember how to count correctly which is try triador triador that's triador? Triador? these are all like named after like like dante da vinci these are big name people <laughs> so who's tirador i've never heard of tirador I don't know. Maybe it means tiramisu instead. Maybe that's what we're going for. <laughs> I wish it was. You know, big man tiramisu. <laughs> oh. Uh, of course, these are masterpiece scale. Of course, they are G1. The characters in question are Infernal, Grapple, and Artfire. Infernal. Uh, what? You said Infernal, and I like that better than who it is. Oh, Inferno. Yeah. Did I say Infernal? Yeah. Either way, I meant Inferno. I wanted to be Infernal. I guess, like, calling Dante an Inferno makes yeah. kind of sense. Yeah. Oh, it's almost smart. I just got it. Yeah, it's almost smart. It's almost <laughs> smart. It's kind of neat. Uh, so, yeah, uh, as I say, masterpiece scale. Not a surprise. G1 characters trying to be... I, I, are they trying to be animation accurate? I don't know. Not... They're not really toy accurate either. Super. They're kind of like a... It's... When they do this weird amalgamation yeah. of both, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, not in a bad way or anything. It's just like a, you look at it and you go, I, I can't really pin either one down super hard. I'll, yeah. I'll read the little details that TFW have wrote for them. So, yeah. uh, for the Inferno, this masterpiece scale G1 Inferno comes back with an updated color render. Apparently it's a render. After the prototype we saw. Apparently we saw a, ren- uh, a prototype. Oh my god. Uh, and so first renders back in 2015, Mikey. Oh, sweet zombie Jesus. Back, um, when, ba- back when things were less scary and that's six years ago jesus how long yeah wow uh this is going to be interesting engineering wise i guess things came up i suppose I don't know. have extratron's not been around that long i don't know uh maybe i mean this is this is maybe it's one of these things where the renders came up and it wasn't uh yeah. Transbots. Yeah. No, yeah no it was x transbots oh my yeah, I just clicked on the link, August uh, 15th, 2015. Wow, that's very old. That's a CAD, uh, yeah, CG model, but hey, there you go. Uh, yeah, this rendition of Inferno brings us a nice cartoon-inspired robot mode. Um, kind of. Uh, with highly detailed fire truck, which includes uh, interiors and opening doors. Shit your pants, Mikey. On command. Uh, no. Uh, for grapple, we've got an obvious retool, <laughs> an obvious retool of Inferno as grapple. Uh, now uh, a long crane in alt mode. Now a long crane. I, I assume now vehicle is. I'm assuming it's supposed to be is now, but yes, never mind. Uh, and the fire one, uh, final one is art fire. Uh, the X transports treat uh, their fans with a third variant inspired by G1 Japanese art fire. Uh, this new redeco and re- retool? Is that right? I'll need to have a look. Will include his ta- uh, target uh, master partner. I think his head's a little different, isn't it? Yeah, his head's a little different. Yes, yeah, he's got different little ears, let's say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, a, a minor retool. And I think the front of the. No, the front of the vehicle's now different. Yeah, so it looks like that. Also, mm. uh, there was the MX10. Uh, Oh, was that 100,005? Uh, 35. Oh, M- MX35, yeah. Yes, MX35. Uh, Caravaggio. Car- Caravaggio. Caravaggio, thank that you. Is, that is a very well-known... So Tiridor must be something famous and, and artistic, because Car- Caravaggio right. is like a very well-known Italian painter. Lame. Uh, so Caravaggio, wow. the, <laughs> what's he done you, for his Renaissance? Recent, what's he done for his recently, Mikey? Died. It's pretty pretty lazy, isn't it? I'm just saying you died. Pretty lazy. Wow, you died. Pretty lazy. Bitch. Yeah. What 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 you done recently? I died. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. Uh, so this version is the um. It's the, the, the e-hobby version of G1 Road Hauler from 2003. That famous repaint of... Gra- um, not Grapple. He was oh, in the cartoon. I, no, it is Grapple. He was in the it's, cartoon. With, oh. He was. He yeah, pulled a, a Grapple up. into a green version of Grapple. Mm. He, lift, he lifted Optimus up. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so, Mikey. Uh, Inferno, Grapple. 
uh, um, Artfire and and the other one, the green one, the snot one. What, mm. what, what do you think? You like them? Are they cool? Um, they look okay. Um, unfortunately, it's like one of my least favorite G one character designs. I would agree. Uh, he I, was I, one of the worst uh, G one. Well, maybe maybe not one of the worst G one toys. I remember having him and not ever mm. liking him mainly because I would always fire his fists out and lose them quite quickly. No, so that was kind of annoying as a child. I just, like, seriously, like, Inferno is one of my least favorite visuals in Transformers. Like, as a, he's, I, I don't like how his head sits. I don't like his proportions. Like, nothing about him appeals to me. Mm. Um, unfortunately, or, well, not really anything, because I don't have to like him. But, um, <laughs> yeah, and, um, unfortunately, like, Grapple and Art Fire... I call her maybe just for being a bit of a different color, but I don't like any of them. Like no, aesthetically, no. like this is just like well, I just oh, oh, it's just like it's turning me off. I don't like it. it <laughs> would you say again? It usually boils down to it's a problem with Inferno himself rather than the the toy. Yeah, no, I sure the, the toys look perfectly competent and everything else. Yeah. Um, but it's just like yeah, like it is a toy of Inferno who literally can go fuck himself. Wow, 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 wow. Ma- Mikey coming out with the guns, Inferno. blasting, baby. Fuck you, Inferno. Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that uh, he's one of my favorite dudes either. Um, he's always, Do you say uh, he I can go think... fuck himself? I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say he can fuck himself. He'd need to remove some ribs to be able to do that, at least. At least to suck himself. Um, I don't know. He just doesn't do a huge amount for me. Neither does Grapple. Um, I like it, pff, the green one. Uh, if the, if the green one was in the constructor cons, I'd be like, he's the lame version of Hook. You know, <laughs> Hook provides the same kind of um, uh, abilities as as that guy, but is more cool and has a better robot mode. But you know, the this was obviously based on a Diaclon, uh, an old Diaclon. So what can you do? Uh, it, it seems like fine rendition. Just don't care about grapple. That's my issue with it, I think, generally speaking. Mikey, mm-hmm. do you want to tell us about DNA and how they design things? DNA. Uh, so, DNA Designs have revealed DK27, which is an upgrade kit from Masterpiece Movie MP12 Optimus Prime. This is the Bumblebee Movie Optimus Prime. This is... is this one? Is this old? Is this new? Came out a couple of months back. Um, okay, so fairly newish. Yeah, so this is quite a hefty sh- set for want of a better term. Um, comes with new forearms, completely new piece, which include articulated hand and hide out mode parts. Uh, leg extenders, new longer thighs, featuring a double knee articulation and better upward movement. New head, featuring light piping in the eyes and shoulder panels. Uh, new pieces with a hinge articulation to eliminate the infamous cat ears in the robot, in, in the truck mode. Um, we do have comparison shots in all of these. So the cat ears one is pretty simple. Um, you... In in uh, the uh, in the original, you had the sticky uppy bits at the back that gave him the cat ears, obviously, and then these just have a hinge in them. To the so so it's simple. You kind of wish the original guys had done this. Um, the new arms are sleeker and don't have all the kibble. Mm. At least they do a better job of hiding it. Um, they do look like it still transforms and everything else. It's just like tighter um, and doesn't have the clear plastic mixed in. Um, uh, da, 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 the new thigh pieces make him quite a bit taller. Yeah. Um, like, and cleaner and, as well. Yeah, def- definitely cleaner and like a much better knee articulation. Um, the head doesn't seem to do a ton. It's mostly the um, the light piping. So yeah. if you really like this toy, but he's not quite what you wanted, and this is a design, like for many, like this is the best movie Optimus design. Um, and this is, you know, you want to make it a bit taller, a bit more anime proportions, or maybe movie proportions. I don't remember his design well enough. But, um, this is the way to go. I would be very cautious of something this extensive, though, because this is requiring you to do some, like, changes to a masterpiece toy that will involve taking parts of the toy apart. Oh god, I forgot this is a and masterpiece. I was looking and, at the images yeah. and thinking it was a retail. <laughs> and then, and again, it's masterpiece, which unfortunately at the moment does mean probably a bit more delicate than you'd like. Mm, that's fair. I think um, that's fair to say. I think the result looks good. Um, I think the proportions work a lot better, and like I think I like the way it looks better. But mm. it it's that it's like my brain is like cool. Really wish you didn't have to do all of that. 
Yeah. Uh, did we talk about the Rekgar, uh DNA uh, upgrade kit from a, a few weeks ago? I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think we did, but that one as well uh, filled in a lot of like, gaps in the toy. Like, it gave him uh, covers for, you know, when you, you rotate the hands down into the into the uh, the forearms. They, mm-hmm. they gave you panels to close those up. Uh, it almost feels like DNA toys slowly becoming almost a necessity to make your figures look less cheapy in a lot of ways. And I don't, I think it's because of like it being 2021 and maybe it's not having uh, that movie money anymore, but it feels like yeah. a lot of the, uh, there's a lot more cheap, uh, cheap cost, uh, cut, cost cutting, if I can talk right, cost cutting measures uh, implemented into Transformers these days, hmm. which I get, you need to save money on a corporate level and whatnot, but uh, it makes them look, cheapy and uh obviously dna toys is doing their best to seemingly try and fix some of these issues but i, I don't know it kind of makes me sad that this is this is where transformers has kind of gone in a way you know mm. yeah it's, unfair no it's it's something like for me i kind of like take the toy as is like mm. taking the toy and saying like if i spend an extra 20 dollars, i could make this deluxe look perfect like i'm just like you know i'm just gonna if i like it i like it and if i don't i don't um mm. But yeah, if you're like, it, 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 for a lot of people, it is very much like a case of like, wow, this looked really good if I couldn't see through him. I, I And I think that's a very fair point because mm-hmm. we've had uh, figures that we really like as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, a little bit on the gappy side and we wished um, were filled. Like, uh, well, there was a, there's a female Transformer who I can't remember who looked quite good, but if you turned it to the side... You could look through her. Oh Who was yeah, that? was that wind? Was that one of the wind blades? I don't know if it was one of the wind blades or not. Um, was it the first wind blade? You remember the very very no, first one? We no, no, she was fairly solid. She, her problem was Who she was couldn't it? stand. Oh um, uh, well, I mean, um, animated black arachnia. She was one, right? Um, she had issues. She had issues, but like I would also say, like that was her problem. Might was design elements. Like mm, not yeah. actual, like because they designed her without taking into account like her back, her you know, how back heavy she was, and yes, they did. That's they right. didn't her have, legs were more of an issue. Definitely, they didn't have clip in points for her for her um, spider elements and the yeah. legs, which means that they always came loose, mm-hmm. and you and like it always looked weird. But like that design is one thing, but it was def- there are definitely transformers that like really. Like, like it just gets really distracting when they don't have something simple like a panel to cover up a gap. Mm, yeah. Mm. Or or uh, pl- uh, flaps to go over giant holes or yeah, yeah. just holes in the legs in general. Like it would be really weird to get like Cybertron Scourge today where if because like he one of the best things about him was that he had flaps to go over the holes that appeared when you uh, flip the arms out. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it would be really weird to get him today and just like, there's his fist staring out at mm. you in dragon mode. Yeah. Like I say, I, I, it's obviously just because no movie money and that mo- man. No mo- <laughs> movie money. When we got that movie money, we were lucky because we got a lot of incredibly um, good toys. Yep. The Generations line really benefited from those movies. <laughs> Holy hell. Uh, right. Uh, shall I take us on, Mr. Mikey? Is there, is there anything else on, on the Masterpiece upgrade? Take me away. All right. Smell this rag, Mikey. Smell this rag. Not the rag. Uh, that's the rag. Uh, so you remember how we talked about the Kingdom Slammer, Mikey, uh, last week or the week before at some point? I vaguely remember. Yeah, I think it was probably around the same, the same time we were talking about the, the other redo of the pipes into the road grabber dude. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Uh, well, we've got in-hand images of Slammer now. He seems to be a uh, one of the modular kind of guys. Yeah, uh, I guess kind of like six guns or the the um, MicroMaster bases. I guess is the best way to describe him. We get to see his head now. We get some good images of him. He's a little devoid of color. They've tried to break him up from just being white to having this kind of off-white. Yeah, slowly semi- tending towards gray. Yeah, gray green. I would call it. Yeah, almost like um, dirty snow. You know when you go uh, mm. when snow gets kind of grotty from uh, like cars going over it enough times. It's kind of like that color. Is yeah, how yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Uh, then he's got really white forearms, which I don't think looks good in robot mode, but does in tank mode. When yeah, comes they together. they really prioritize the tank mode in this guy, which you know it's slammer. It, yeah, you know, it makes but, sense. Um, it is one of the things where like. Could you have done that without making the robot mode that? <laughs> yeah, I, I really like specifically. I don't like the head sculpt. Um, 
it looks a bit silly. I can see what they were trying to go for. I don't mind the 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 one piece visor. I think it's specifically the the weird face. Uh, he's got what I would describe as two screws on the yeah. side for his cheeks and a um. I don't know what shape. What do you call that shape, Mikey? Um, like not a full triangle. A divot, I'd call it. Like it's it's. I don't know. But like he's got weird proportional issues. His colors really clash in the robot mode for me. Um, mm. he's got good ankles at least, but oh, very good, yeah. I, his proportions just don't work to me. It feels like someone got the designed the like the tank designed how it came apart for it to go on to people and be a, a modulator, and then sort of like and I guess you stick them together to form a robot. I mean, couldn't you argue that for a lot of the modulator dudes though? I I don't know. I think most of them look better than this. Like it's I, it's that waist that really kills it for me. Like that's a big aesthetic faux pas, in my opinion. I think. I mean, if you they've got him stood next to the um, IDW Six. Centurion redo redo yeah. Of brunt. Dude. Yeah, uh, but I think he looks better. I think like the, I, the I way agree. the way his proportions work, I think it makes more sense. This guy, like Brunt, has like a round thing, but Brunt is like really inhuman looking. Yeah, Whereas yeah, this yeah. guy is a standard human looking robot, and he's just got like basically a big column. From his penis to his torso. <laughs> See, I, I would describe Brunt as Brunt looks like a drone. Uh, yeah. Um, Slammer looks like he's designed to be his own robot. Yeah, and like he doesn't look nearly as good as Six Gun. No, I was going to say that as well. I was just about to mention that. Yeah, he, mm. uh, he really doesn't. However, uh, Slammer does have a much better vehicle mode than Brunt. Brunt's vehicle mode, I think, is a bit on the shitty side. Uh, it stands up quite well, actually, mm. next to uh, Warpaths as well. It's yeah, a pretty no. solid-looking tank. It's we a, don't know yeah. how he's going to work as a modulator, though. The, in the images, we don't see that. We don't know how his parts are going to come up, uh, yeah. how he will come apart, and how he will interact with other um, robots that can, you know, use those mm. ports and pegs and whatnot. So maybe... I, I don't know. I think uh, there's a lot of sacrifices made to make modulators in a lot of way. And maybe yeah. Not for the best reasons. Yeah, like, they can be fun. Like, they can be they fun, can be. but, like, and if you buy 5 million Paleotrexes, you can have make something pretty cool, but... Th those are interesting, yeah. Yeah, when people buy, like, like five or six of the same figure, they there can be some really interesting things done. It was the same for the Micromaster bases as well. Mm. Uh, but the problem is, I don't think they ever really worked when you just bought one of them and you tried to make them work with another figure, like, another modulator. Like, if you just got one Slammer... Uh, and Brunt and Six Gun, and you tried to mess with them. It just, I, I don't think it often worked. Maybe it did. Maybe there were some combinations that worked, but I didn't see a lot. Most of them were like you needed two of something or you needed three of something, mm. like the Paleo Trex, where it was mainly the Paleo Trexes and then maybe one bird dude, uh, one of the pterodactyl dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that looked really good, but you know, expensive. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a. Don't have anything else to say there, unless you, you know, you got any more hate on Slammer. No, you, I'm good. I don't hate. Okay. I just think he's a failure as a human being. Well, well, he's not a human being, so he definitely has failed in that aspect. Fail! Damn. Uh, right, Mikey, do you want to take us on to something that I know you were very happy about? Uh, Hazlab? Yes. Yes. And the uh, stand. The stand specifically. Yeah. I know, I know you were telling me about the, the, the joy yeah, that the oh, stand spread. It spread so much happiness, Andy. I know. I know. So much happiness. So oh, anyway, yes. we have conf <laughs> confirmation that um, Sarah Saber is sitting at 75% funded. Um, so this was from September 20th, where he was sitting at 8,200 backers. Uh, currently, Star Saber is sitting at... Uh, 8,286 backers. So it added, added 86. That's 8 and a 6. Um, so, um, we still have 20, uh, just over two weeks remaining now. Uh, because they've gone down, like, there's been a couple of days now. Um, so, yeah, like, I'd be surprised if Star Saber doesn't make it, because we're going to see a big uptake at the, towards the end of it, because not only will we see people coming in and funding it themselves, but all the uh, company orders and stuff from Z Zavi and, and various retailers and stuff, their orders will all be added on at the tail end. Mm. Um, so this thing is probably going to very easily clear 11,000. Um, but we also got information on the next stretch goal. So for a reminder, the $14,000... Um, so, uh, supporter stretch goal is the cannon, which, as many have said, that is kind of required for Star Saber. Hmm. 
It may not be necessarily the best thing to have as, a, as an exclusive uh, incentive. But as I said, this is incentive. And the thing to get us up to the tier 2 stretch goal, which is 17,000 um, backers. So this is supposed to encourage you to go out and grab your friends and shake them like a baby on the news screaming that they need to support it that support this and and back this project because they want this thing is a clear plastic stand with a, a v on it for victory and what's an that mean? Bot- why, why, why does it have v for victory on what's the what, why why is the v there if it's translucent and is very difficult to see and why is and it's got an Autobot symbol as well, which is also translated. There's, shouldn't, there's... shouldn't V stand for Master Force? Yeah, maybe. Or it, <laughs> maybe they could paint it. V, v could stand for Headmasters. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe... animated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what am I even talking about? Am, am I... V what? for Violin Jiger. Um... Oh! Mm. <laughs> now, why, why aren't you backing Sarah Saber now, Andy? I don't know. I don't have a good reason. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So yeah, not not painted or anything. A a mm. and not and 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 also like cross hatched. So means... what? Sorry, is is this just one bit of plastic that's translucent for a stand? Yeah, it's a stand. It's a translucent stand, but you get an arm for robot mode and an arm for jet mode. Oh, you know what's really sad, Mikey? Because mm. I've looked at the images of the stand. You get like I got a better stand that came with ah oh, a Moon Gundam. Moon Gundam. Mm. Did you see that stand? What it was the um, oh what the what the action is it called? Are they called action bases in Japan? Uh, they are, are the 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 Bandai ones are anyway. Yeah, I think the newest ones are still action bases. You got a free one of them when you got Moon. Yeah, Gundam. they've Moon got... Gundam was only like I don't know twenty to thirty yeah. pounds, and it or... does more and, and it's more big... secure. Yeah, the big or like you got so, you got a larger version of that with the uh, as with stuff like the um the the. Was it the Bound Dock? Yeah, the Bound Dock and the Figure A Standard Digimon. Mm. Like, because they all use the same one, but it's, like, very modular and everything else. And, again, it's coming with a set that's costing, what, between 30 and 60, depending on the size of the kit. Yeah. And that you are, like you build yourself, but... It, it, again, it, for me, what's getting me is, like, this is supposed to be an incentive. Hey, make sure we get as many people on this project as possible. Mm. So that you can get a gun that we should have had anyway. Yes. My, yeah. No. Or, I, I, no. One hundred percent. It should have been in there already. 100%. Or a stand. Yeah. Which you could get separately for cheaper. To be honest. Um. Do you think it would have been better to do this uh, Haslab thing as like Star Saber first on its own, but with the potential to combine with Victory Leo? And then do Victory Leo. No, no, I think they're do, they're doing it the right way, but like okay. they're not this stretch goal thing. I do not think they're being realistic with at all. And like twenty thousand now, like what? What is it? Are, is it they're going to include that's going to encourage you to more than double your backer count? Dead Zorus, uh, an official <laughs> one. I mean, yeah, put in an entire leader <laughs> figure. Yeah, no, that will do yes. it. But, um, but we need like. A, a, a billion we need a billion from people. Yeah. But like a stand and a yeah. gun. And, and not even not even a very cool stand, arguably. No, quite it's a, not. Ar- arguably quite a cheap looking stand. Like for that we can one, 3D I'd, print this easily. I'd ex- oh easy. I'd expect something that's like made of something more solid than that. And yeah. was painted. No, definitely not translucent. I, I, no, like, or if it was translucent, they, they, it looked they, better they than have, that. They have to be painting it. I refuse to believe no. that they're not going to paint it. They, they're they, not they, going to paint it, Andy. They have to. They're not going to paint it. But they can't, because it doesn't look like a product, just releasing it like this. Yeah, but it's 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 a stretch goal, Andy. Yeah, that's why it should be painted. No, no, yes. it doesn't have to be painted. It's translucent. It is. It's got it a is, V on it, Andy. V. It is. I, I guess it's left there for the the adult fan to do. It, it I does didn't seem weird. realize the V was there for ages. Well, because you wouldn't because it all blends in. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what a weird choice. I still think they have a lot to learn about doing these kind of Kickstarter style fundings. 
Um, yeah. And it's causing, they're, they're themselves are causing controversy at the moment uh, because now discussions going on about whether or not these should even be happening. I think um, generally uh, the, the, the whole, there has been a general rumbling about um, the validity of like Haslab existing. Yeah, after, I kind of understand it. From, you know? Yeah. Um, but sp- specifically like what caught, kicked it off recently was Sentinel. And yes. the big QC problems they were having with that. Did you see more about that? Because I, I personally didn't see anybody having issues with uh, um, their Sentinels, but I don't follow, obviously, a huge yeah, swath of people. I didn't, because no one I saw had it, to be honest. Okay. Um, but I did see, like, it's still a thing, and, like, there's very emotional takes on this, and a bit more, like, well-thought-out ones. And then there's ones that are, like, trying to be one or the other. And obviously then there's a bunch of people coming in on top of trying to make money on their YouTube videos off it and blah, 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 blah. And it it basically, I think a lot of feeling is going out and then people are coming in afterwards and saying some reasonable stuff. Whether they are arguing for or against Hadlab. Mm. Like, but it's a bit crazy. But hey, it's basically Transformers and toy version of Shock Jock. It's like, oh my god, here's a hot take. Frogs are falling from the sky. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I, th- I think they should be doing something a little bit more interesting because this this is something like Star Saber is not special enough that this couldn't have been made in J- well. This isn't special enough that mm. the Japanese like even two years ago wouldn't have made this figure and sold it oh, yeah, exclusively yeah. in Japan. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I can say that with with uh, strength? Because we've seen it before. <laughs> Star Convoy. Granted, he was yeah. based off of something, but there were yeah. other like ver- uh, there are other variants of toys that were only in the Japanese market, only for the Japanese market. So it wouldn't be mm. unusual. Maybe it would have been a bit more of a push for them to make this based on its own molding. I could still see them doing it. I mean, there's I, meant to be yeah. Armada Optimus Prime. Where the fuck's that? <laughs> oh, sorry, Ma- Ma- uh, 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 Micron Legends. No, Optimus Prime. Uh, Andy, you were imagining things. How long ago has that been now? What year no, are we on and, to? And Andy, no, no. You, Six what years? Are you talk, Andy, what right? are you talking about? There was I nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> Silly. Andy, no. Yeah. Nothing was there. I'm, 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 I'm waiting for like another third, like two or three third party companies to do Armada Optimus Primes and then Hasbro comes out and goes, stop making Armada Optimus Primes. <laughs> we'll, we'll sue you. I'm waiting for it. Stop it. Where's the, Viol- where's the Haslab Violin Jiger figure? <laughs> I did actually hear like somebody say, uh, like if Haslab wanted to do something that wouldn't sell in stores properly, mm. uh, do something like Visionaries or um, I don't think they hold Centurions, but there are they they have other properties. Oh, mm. Mask! Technically, they, they own Mask, but they could do something like that because you know they they have no media backing or anything like that. So it, and it's again something for the adult market, which is clearly what Haslab is for. It's not for kids. It's specifically for us, um, so why not? Why not do something? I don't know, a little bit like that. You don't even need to make a massive line. You could do a mat tracker, that would do. And uh, I know a lot of people. I don't know how many people would do it, but that's that's what the testing would be for. That's literally what the the um, the model would be for, where you get like kickstarters and stuff, right? I don't know. At least this is better than Unicron. I mean, low bar in my opinion, but. It still counts. <laughs> you know me and Unicron, Andy. We, we I do. That was so badly handled. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. And that is one toy where I just think like, do you that... think this is better handled than that? <sighs> yes, because like I don't think they're going to have to basically go like, whoops, we didn't get enough people uh, backing this. <laughs> quick, extend it by a month. Quick, quick. <laughs> we we spent a l- we spent about half, probably more than half a million on this fucking mole. Quick. Yeah. Yeah. Or else someone's getting fucking fired. Mm. <laughs> I guess maybe a problem with Haslab, at least the, the releases that we've seen so far from mm. Haslab, is the mentality seems to be big. Just make it big. Yeah, yeah. Like Because especially... Jabba Sail Barge, big. big. The Sentinel, big. big. Galactus, Unicron, big. big. Galactus, again, big. The Cookie, cookie Monster. Monster thing was, was again, large. big. He was large. Well, he's um, a cookie monster, you know, makes sense. A lot of it just seems to be that. We, you know, I, I get, because this is, again, the bigger it is, the less likely it can go on a store shelf mm-hmm. because of space and whatnot. But uh, maybe maybe scale it back. Maybe it doesn't need to be massive. Or maybe it does. Maybe, maybe fans are so fickle that they are size queens and maybe it has to be big for them to want to um, invest in something like this. 
I, mm. I don't know. I'm not a marketing person. I don't see how terrible people like us spend our money in, in stupid <laughs> ways. I only know how I spend my money in stupid ways, so maybe mm-hmm. I shouldn't judge. But I mean, uh, you, you could always say that uh, I guess a good, maybe not a good example because it had a lot of issues, but um, the Masters of the Universe Classics line uh, got out both a Castle Grayskull and a Snake Mountain. Mm, true. Now, granted, true. they were they were expensive and they were very big, uh, but I think generally there wasn't a lot of people who were annoyed about it, apart from how how generally the classics were to get. But that's that's yeah, that's and... an online issue, and I think yeah, that, that's an, yeah. that's an issue that all of the toy companies across the world are currently having, especially if they're online based. Mm-hmm. Hasbro Plus. I don't see the point here, <laughs> personally. Um, I did at the start and I think like if you're doing like stuff like Japanese imports or selects it works, but mm. I don't think they're like, I'm glad I don't have a membership because I don't think they do enough for that at all, at all. At no, all, at all. no. I'm not like, quite sure what the point I... is in, in the in having that stuff, yeah, sorry, the the subscription, paying the money for it. I, I don't I, even know why you'd have to pay a subscription. Yeah, I remember that originally they were talking about having like, okay, we're going to have Pulse exclusive figures. Mm. They did not. No, they just had like <laughs> you can pre-order first. Oh, on that's things right. That we're overstocked on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wasn't the assumption there was going to be that's what the generation selects. Figures yeah, were gonna they were going to be. Gonna be the, it never oh, happened. they're going to be Pulse figures. Nope, we're just going to have them on Pulse. So they're it's like an Amazon exclusive, but in our shop. The only thing I could see that maybe Hasbro Pulse could do to maybe maybe almost justify itself is have convention exclusives, but in like normal amounts. From what like new new conventions like or stuff like that? Or are you saying like, like let's, go let's back and get me the animated that, set? Because if they want to do the animated set, I will buy that. I mean that won't happen because they don't own the 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 rights to do that. Well, it's I mean they own the to rights do. to do that set, but they won't do that set because it was a a botcon thing, so they, it wasn't official. I don't see them doing that. Yes, it was. I mean like the they own no they own all the rights to it. They're just like they did. Oh, like, okay. They own all well, the right, like they own all the rights. Well, Technically, well, apart be, from botcon's name, they own all the rights to everything that came out of there. To be honest, specifically the ones I meant with the San Diego Comic Con ones, so like the rock band. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Do that. Please, like, for like the love that of God. stuff. But also do but... the animated set because I want that set. <laughs> uh but again, like it would be like okay. So let's say let's say in a theory, San Diego Comic Con one day happens again mm. in a, in a distant future in the year three thousand <laughs> when the coronavirus has killed ninety percent of the Earth's population. Mm. And we're still able to go to conventions, right? Yeah. So that's that's how the Yuga Comic Con comes on. You have the exclusives announced. You have them there for about. Uh, you have them there exclusive for the convention for a week, maybe two weeks, and then third week or fourth week they go on Hasbro Pulse, and you go, okay, now I can get the figures because I live in Japan and I can't fly over to um, California, or I live in Australia and everything's trying to eat my house anyway, so I I, I can't fly over to America. And mm. Then they could get them. For instance, and that that's maybe a better way to do it. And the I guess the only thing that would uh, deter that would be well, we're underselling the exclusivity of the convention. Trying to say, like, well, maybe that's a good thing because you can make more of them and get them to people who are going to still get them, but through like eBay or something and pay a much higher rate for them. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think from a business point, that makes sense as well because you get to make more of a product and you get to sell more of a product. And uh, you hopefully get to screw over scalpers, which is always a good thing. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Shall we move on, Mikey? Let's move on. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, so, uh, Cyberverse Season 4, Mikey, do you remember how it's not been uh, announced of anything yep. due to it? It's it's fine. It's season 4 is happening, believe it or not. Uh, it's still not announced, though. <laughs> no, no, it's not. But there was a promotional banner via Amazon, so not even something coming from Hasbro, as far as we're aware. Excuse me. Uh, Amazon have updated their Transformers page with a new Transformers Cyberverse Season 4 promotional banner. It's got Bumblebee, Prime, and the Dinobots. I'm sure Prime will be a big deal in it. I, I, that's a joke, because I have no idea. I imagine <laughs> the Dinobots will be. Uh, the image features uh, the people I just mentioned. Uh, a nice piece of artwork. Stay tuned uh, with TFW, and uh, more importantly, <laughs> yep. uh, to get the information on, on Season 4. And then there's some toy lines. So yeah, it was just... Here's the banner. Why am why am I even bringing this up? Because it's uh-huh. the first piece of promotion that the sh- that the shows had. Yeah, we know that the toy line's coming. Yeah, we've seen them talked about the toys, but apart from that, like I the, the last bit I remember 
is when we, like, let's transport ourselves back two years ago or something like that, and I remember seeing a black version of Cyberverse Megatron, and I think that was around the time you were telling me that that yeah. was the movie time, or the Bumblebee... That was the theorized Bumblebee movie time. Yeah. And I think that was the last time we heard about it, officially. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, about that, like, we had, like, oh, something's happening, and... oh, Maybe not was, two like, years ago. There Maybe was, like, uh, it would be about a year and a half now, I think. Um, oh, God, really? I was there, kind of joking, the two. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I think know. Cyberverse, I think, was late, or was early seas, uh 2020. No, it was... No, I was going to work at the time, so it would have been 2019, I think. Oh, oh God. Because, <laughs> like, I, I, work stopped for me once... Um, COVID you know, hit, yeah. COVID hit, because I, I went on the thing. Let's double check. Uh, oh, my God. Season 3 aired in... T- okay, season 3 did air in 2020, but it aired the oh. first part of 2020. So, yeah, just... Oh, uh, right. So, like, not long into it. Um, right, right, right. So, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, like, I really want to see it. I really like Cyberverse. Like, yeah, February 2020 is when um I was watching Cyberverse. Um... That's a while without good Transformers television. What do you mean? The Netflix show, Mikey. That's a while without good Transformers television. I heard it was a while, uh, a massive success, according to some on the internet, who are allowed their opinions, even though they're terrible. Cyberverse is much better. <laughs> um, that's not opinion. That's just fact. Um, oh, Jesus. It had Tarn. And, and it had Tarn. <laughs> what did you have? <laughs> Fucking nothing. It's true. It had the sound wave Rodimus bromance. It had the sound wave of um, Clubber bro- bromance as well. Um, oh. Yeah, they're great friends. And also, like, sound wave is just such a dude. Hmm. Um, and Thunder Hell, who's also great. Sorry, I just really want... I rewatched Cyberverse in the week, so I'm, I'm all buzzed. Um, oh, wow. So, yeah, so it's really strange to me to have, like, here's all the character renders... This show's no, happening. No, here, here are all the toys. Yeah. Oh, there's a banner. Yeah. Anything else? No. No, we're still calling it Bumblebee because we had licensing. <laughs> yeah, um, I suppose they, they probably still have to call it Bumblebee yeah. just because, like, that's how it's known at that's, this point. So yeah, you can't that's, really change that was it. That, that's the, they made that licensing choice in the, yeah. just, as the show was not about Bumblebee at all. No, it, it was <laughs> the first season. I know, not, know when they, not, when they, not when they renamed it to Bumblebee. <laughs> I'll oh know. wait no that's right it was cyberverse wasn't it it was yeah. cyberverse for a while right yeah it was a cyberverse and then like but during the first quarter of um season three it becomes transformers bumblebee cyberverse adventures bumblebee's not in that bit of the show oh that's weird it's all about rodimus at that point or hot rod that mu- that must have been just for like uh hooking kids i'm guessing yeah right? yeah Since yeah the associate and bumblebee like, is the, the main transformer now yeah and bumblebee does have a bit more to do in the tail end but like five six episodes Right, um, yeah, and, and he's not the most interesting thing out of those episodes by a long shot. Um, well, the, <coughs> it's, it's arguable how interesting he was when Robot the show Cthulhu. kicked off, right? Robot Cthulhu. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, like this shows off the new d- designs, and I really like the new Dinobot designs. Um, I mm-hmm. would kill to get Generation Grade toys for these guys. Ta <laughs> Like man, Sludge looks good. Yeah. Um, I sent you. Was it this week that I sent you the image of like someone who got all the, all of the oh, different yeah. scales of toys and put them all together? And yeah. I was like, it's sad that they're not all deluxe uh, quality. Yeah, it's like um, Voyager. Like, surely it should be like three of them are deluxe, and then Grimlock and Sludge is Voyagers. You think so? That would make no, sense. No, it's, it's it was even weirder. It's like some of them are deluxes. Some of them are, ultras. Some of them are uh, warriors. Some yeah. of them are ultras. Yeah. It's, like, it's all over the place. Like you hate me specifically. Anyway, well, season four must be somewhere around the corner. <laughs> Maybe. Because otherwise this is getting weird. Yeah. Like well, we, we, COVID we, has to be pushing this shit back. Surely. Yeah. Oh, it must have. But like presumably Volcanicus was supposed to not be revealed until the show i guess and but maybe yet, the show got pushed back so yeah. much that the the scheduling said okay we we've had we've held on to these bumblebee toys so long but we need to mm. get them out now otherwise they're not going to make money maybe that's the the business approach to it i guess yeah um i don't know yeah it's weird to be fair though a lot of dumb stuff has done like uh, the shang chi toys came out way before the movie came yeah, out. yeah they did didn't they yeah 
They all tanked. Um, also, I'm amused. Clearance, but... One of the first comments I see. Still find it funny they renamed the show to Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures, even though at that point Bumblebee was no longer the main character and wasn't, feature- wasn't featuring as regularly. <laughs> did you did you write that comment, Mikey? Because you no. just said that. <laughs> Mm. Anyway, uh, I'll take us on to the last bit of mm. news because why not? Uh, it's just a small bit again. Uh, TFCon Baltimore, uh, October 22 to the 24th. Uh, special guest Andrew Griffith has been announced. The comic man who did Lost Light, All Hail Megatron, uh, Unicron, Robots in Disguise, lots of other stuff as well. He's a good man. Uh, fun times. Good lad. Uh, so if you want, go and see him and, um, you know, buy some artwork and whatnot. So, uh, that's that's uh, that's our news, Mikey. Mm. That's us done. What are you done this week, son? What are you done for fun? Um, like I said, I rewatched Cyberverse. Um, that's a really good show. That's really easy to rewatch. But did you watch the whole thing? Yep. Oh, okay. Did I it? wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to do season one and two myself. Personally. See, I season two is better than I remember it being actually. Um, but okay. and then like, but like season one has like moments I like mixed in with like oh early days, early days, and then Blur dies, and it was like holy crap. Um, because Blur didn't just die, like melted. And then um, season two I think happens. My problem was that is I didn't care who Blur was. Yeah, there is that. But like season two happens, and then like like Starscream stuff is really good in that, and um some of the tail end stuff is really good. Like the weird episode where where you find out Optimus just really dislikes social situations. It's really socially anxious, mm. which was fun. Um, and then season three happens, and just like ah, <laughs> no shits given. As they dive over the side of the building and Hot Rod's black and Clobber's great and Soundwave's like the main Decepticon and Megatron gets his eye ripped out and Thunder Howl and Cthulhu and Ghosts and Steve Irwin Transformer. Oh my god. Oh man, season three is fuck in the bum. Also, fantastic soundtrack. Did you say fuck in the bum? Fuck in the bum. Oh, the bomb. I thought you said the bum. Oh, did I? I think, well, I, you know. You'll never the, know. The, yeah, no. <laughs> You'll never know. Um, Don't find out. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I really want season four. So, um, so there's that. I watched uh, Lucifer's final season came out. So I watched that. Oh, what season they came up to? Uh, six. Oh, okay. Um, no, that was actually pretty strong. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've enjoyed Lucifer. It's like mostly it's just kind of like pre- dopey procedural cop stuff, and like I like procedural cop shows. But uh, I would see it's just like um, they they dialed up the supernatural thing. Story of season six is well, Lucifer is now qualified to be God. Oh, uh, okay. And he's got a kind of a complicated relationship with that qualification. Um, is he still making people fuck each other all the time by accident? And uh, no, no, that, uh, or that having sex with people because I remember in season no, one he was having sex with his psychiatrist. Oh yeah, he was having bit. sex with everyone because it was like that was his because yeah. he was like hedonism. But um, he doesn't do that in season six. Oh, okay. Um, season six they bring in a new character called Rory, who is a big spoiler, so I won't spoil that. And she's she's quite um she's played by the uh lady who plays the Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Oh. Uh, Hang on, are you telling me that Satan uh, doesn't want to be horny anymore? He just wants to be happy. He he can, I think he's found a balance between being horny and happy. He's the meme. Mm, He is the meme. Um, And yeah, like, um, he's got some good bits in that. And there's um, not very good action in this one, but um, it's not really trying for it. There's some, there's a, like, still got a fantastic soundtrack. Like, the, the choice of songs for the show is stellar really hmm. is like i love like i go through every season pick out the songs and find different song like different artists and stuff i like Ooh. um which is a really good way of finding like decent rock songs basically and decent metal or like sweet or soul music or something like that um but yeah um try to, like, it, like it's it's very spoilery so there's not much to talk about in that regard but if you like lucifer um i think it's a really strong ending it wasn't actually supposed to happen they were supposed to wrap up with season five and then netflix kind of said that was really good do another one <laughs> Does it inspire you to go mm. and watch uh, The Flash? Again? No, no, because what f- about Batwoman? No, no. Although they did confirm that they're all in continuity, from what I know. But oh no, yeah, all of the Le- CW shows are in continuity. Well, no, not CW. Like CW made all of DC media in continuity. That's not animated. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, if I remember right, but no, no, it did not yeah. make me want to watch The Flash or uh, Batwoman. I might rewatch okay. Flash season one. What What about I've Gotham? Still got them. I might rewatch Flash season one. Okay. No, I think you should you should see all the new speedsters. 
I thought it was really clever when they did the reveal that um, your man was reverse Flash. I couldn't believe that. Um, like, I saw a picture earlier this week, which I sent to mm, Mikey, with mm, all mm. of the speedsters in the thing. And I was like, Iris is a speedster? What the fuck? Uh, she, Who isn't a speedster? She was. A, she gained power for like five minutes. And then I think I, since I've barely kept up with the show in like three or four years now, like... It's um I don't know if that was a big thing going forward. Is that cop dad still a thing? Um Is he I'm dead? I can imagine they killed him. So I like genuinely like I have like I've seen maybe a couple of clips. It's either one of two things. Sad cop dad is allowed to be happy, mm. uh which I don't think, or he's dead. Or maybe he's just not changed at all and he's still sad. Mm. Three three possibilities. I imagine he's probably being killed. Uh, it, it's possible. Wrong. It's possible. Yeah. I know he had some back problems that like pulled him out of the show for a while. But... Oh, the actual the actual actor. Oh, that's yeah. a shame. So, oh. for reference, here are the speedsters that Andy sent me. So, if this will open oh, no. for me, um, how, how many of them were villains for the series? So, season? quite a few. Zoom, mm-hmm. who they got wrong. Uh, the Flash, right? Then yep. there's Kid Flash, who they got so incredibly wrong. <laughs> uh, because they made him a Tibetan monk. Is that not right? No, no, Wally West. I, neither Wally <laughs> no. nor Wallace West have either been Tibetan monks. Wow. That's, uh, At no you point need to open your mind, Mike. You either of their careers at Kid Flash have they gone on and discovered, uh, you know, Buddh- Buddhism. Um, hmm. Which is, they brought him because the actor is really... Uh, strongly into buddhist philosophy and stuff which is great but i don't want that in the tv show for wally yeah, west he's not really acting then no it's just like i uh, yeah i just want to play me it's just like you're an actor act um <laughs> excess who is very different from the comics because remember... they eat a lot of food and have a lot of sex and uh do indulge in a lot of things well in the comics she's bart's cousin Oh, so that's probably a no then. Also, excess not really a name you would give to someone who's fast. No, but yeah, that's a real thing. Like she's Bart's cousin from the future, but in this she's Barry's daughter from the future. Uh, Black oh, Flash, okay. who's Zoom, but evil, but is based off of the Black Flash, which is dead. That's from Blackest Night, right? Uh, he shows up in Blackest Night, but he he goes back to mid nineties Mark Way, uh, not uh, mid nineties Grant Morrison Flash. A, a, a zombie think. flash, by the way. It, if, basically, if he's the physical manifestation of death for speedsters, would be the easiest sure. way of putting it. Reverse yeah. flash. It, flash, but yellow. Trajectory. Uh, she is in the comics, but I think she's like a throwaway, like, pseudo replacement. Future flash. This is a real flash character, but they've merged him with someone else here. Uh, evil. Basically, in the comics, evil blue flash. Uh, Oliver Queen. I remember that episode. That actually is a good episode. I will say that. He does not look good in that costume from no. that one picture I saw. No, I believe it is actually, at the time, um, one, it was a, not a great costume, but it was actually like uh, the the Barry actor's costume and they just sort of shoved, <laughs> shoved him into it. The difference being that, uh, you know, Oliver Queen's actor is built like a brick shit house. Yeah, Stephen Amell is a big boy. Yeah, he does, he does that salmon thing <laughs> himself. Mm. Uh, Iris West Allen. Uh, Jay Garrick. Uh, Jesse Quick, Godspeed. I think they have Godspeed in like in a lot. Flash eighties, which is based or Flash nineties, which is based on a nineties Flash. Savitar, who's basically just Future Flash. Dark Flash. I have no idea. Um, and they're missing Impulse, who I believe they brought in this season as another child of Barry's. Oh, even though it's that's not who he is. Wow. Um, and please don't fuck with Impulse. Impulse had a fantastic 90s comic. Oh, Mikey. It was very, 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 very good. They still don't... I mean, to be fair, they still don't have, like, Max Mercury or the original Jesse Quick or, like, the billions of other speedsters from the comics or, like, Dark Flash. Oh, no, well, that, they're, they're but, for the future season. Yeah, coming. but, like, it's the fact that they kept on adapting them and kept on ruining what people liked about them. <laughs> We go like Godspeed. A CW show ruining stuff based on the comics. There's a lot you can do with Godspeed that would really fit into a a CW like we're all dramatic kind of world. Mm -hmm. They did none of it. Why would you? But they gave him a lightsaber. (laughs) Um. Anyway, uh, I also, 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 I watched um, He-Man and the Matter of the Universe. 
Oh, the new one. Mm. Um, so that is the new Netflix series, uh, 10 episodes. Um, Still not on the site that I use, unfortunately, so yep. I haven't got to see it yet. So, uh, you like it? You see all 10 episodes? So, 10 episodes? Uh, yeah, 10 episodes. Um, 10. It's pretty, like, it's a younger aiming show, um, obviously, than um, the uh, other Netflix series. And it's basically structured in a way where it's a bit goofy at times uh, and a bit silly at times, but it's trying to sort of fit that, like, more plot driven uh style of netflix animated action show okay um however that means that it is a 10 episode series which opens with a four-parter which is very plot driven oh, wow. it, it introduces the characters um mm-hmm. the characters are oh, i'm gonna double check the real i won't bother checking the real the character names because i don't remember most of them but like tila who's the sorceress cringer who's battle cat uh duncan who's um man at arms man at arms and i i i don't know her name because I don't know the original version's name. Who is Ram Mam? Ram Mam. Yeah, because I don't know what Ram Ram Man's actual name is. No. So I wouldn't know. Um, she's. I think she's new. She's just female yeah. version of Ram Man. Yeah. Because. Um. And I don't like some of the aesthetics are a bit unhuman, obviously. Uh, but I don't like her aesthetic or Man in Arms' aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sorceress is okay, and I think uh, Cringer and He Man. I think look uh, Battle Cat and, uh, and He Man look really good. Um. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of differences in character. Like, Cringer got the name because he refused to fight, not because he's afraid. And, like, he's he's missing his fangs and his claws because they got removed by um, a character called uh, Rakar? Rakar? Um, Sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, the origins of Adam's are different. Ad- our Adam's origin is different. Tila's a street urchin type hand witch. I mean, <laughs> she does hand magic. Um... The... That's called stealing, Mikey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she does it with magic, uh, and it's all a bit more cyberpunk. Um, hmm. Still got it's like it's cyberpunk magic, but it's still cyber, but a lot of cyberpunk. Yeah, uh, it it looked like from the trailers that instead of going for like they they turn up the on the original series in two thousand X, they turn up the the dial on like fantasy and turn yeah. it down on sci fi, and this one's turning it up on sci fi and down on fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's still very fanta- like very into fa- it fantasy, but like Orko's a robot in this, except. He's not Orko, he's a robot who thinks he's Orko. Yeah, who's a great wizard, not like yeah. our... Yeah, no, not there, like original there was Orko. an original Orko, who, who, an original Trollin, who was like a super powerful interdimensional wizard, and this ah, robot okay. thinks he's Orko. Mm. Um, which, and is not a super powerful interdimensional I'm, wizard. I'm sure a twist will probably be he is. I'll uh, be the twist. So far, the twist is they put the wrong gear in him, and, he th- and they've basically told him, no, you're not, and he's having a midlife crisis now. Hmm. Um, but he's actually, like, a lot of people said they expect him to be really annoying. I kind of like him. Um, one thing really working this show's favor is a stellar voice cast. Wow. Very, very good. Greg Griffin, Yuri Lowenthal, David Kay. Oh, David Kay. David Kay's Cringer. Yeah. And he's very good as Cringer. And uh, Yuri yeah. Lowenthal is He-Man and Adam, and he's, he's Yuri Lowenthal. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan <laughs> of... Uh, I think he's a good voice actor. I don't think... He, and I, I think he probably fits these two characters quite yeah. well. Definitely, uh, it's definitely. just, like, he's he's not... A, a, someone I would have picked, I don't think, I, for the role. I would have had a different voice for He-Man. That's something I would... Yes. I, but, yeah, yeah. But they're, they're, you know, they're playing up the teenage aspect of this a lot. Um, I mean, they're doing the stereotypical thing. It's what they do with He-Man generally, isn't it? They either, like, the original show, he didn't really change his voice. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The 2000X, Cam Clark went from uh, Mighty Max Cam Clark to... Uh, um, liquid snake cam clock yeah <laughs> which is fine you know yeah, yeah. um always sounded like he was going a few octaves over what he should but um, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and um the bad guys in this primary bad guys are um evil in trap jaw beast man and skeletor and mm. honestly like the the bad guys are mostly just generic, except Skeletor, who has been handed the scenery and is eating his way through it. Oh, as it should be. That's and he, it should be. he has the best facial animation in the show as well. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes the facial animation, I think, isn't very good in this. I think it over it gets a bit overly expressive. And I was going to ask if it did kind yeah. of that Dreamwave kind of thing. Yeah, it, it is. A Dreamworks. Thing, Dreamworks sorry. is definitely a, a, a visual you could put on this. Like, yeah. not in the design. But in the actual, like in some of the animations, uh, more I would say in the pilot, in the first, right, okay. in the open, in the opening four-parter. Um, but when Skeletor comes in, he is 
uh, some of the voice performance doesn't work for me because he's trying to go from like really high pitched Tammy to occasionally quite sinister while still being nuts. Because like hmm. he's weirdly enough he's more Joker than Mark Hamill was as Skeletor, which is hard to believe because he was like Mark Hamill just did the Joker voice. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I like I liked his portrayal. Like he's wacky and weird, but he's like not dumb. He, he's quite smart. Um, pluses for this show um, are the voice acting Skeletor. The overall characters I think are good archetypes, um, and it's got a very good pace to it. Negatives. Um, it is very plot driven which means the characters never really get apart from a couple of token elements don't really grow very much mm, um okay. and um also it's very plot driven with opens with a four-parter and ends with a two-parter it's not plot driven to the point where the character growth is integrated into the plot because it is like don't shows can do that they don't have time because oh, the, oh okay. because they have four of uh, opening four-parter which is everyone getting their powers right End, end two powder, which is like, oh my god, the shit's hit the fan. Which means mm. they have four episodes in between. Do, does it actually have a finale? Or is it like, oh, um, this is the end of a season. But end it's of a not season. really an end, end of, of a well, season. Well, it is. A, I would say it's an end of a season. As, sorry, a Netflix season is no, what I should say. I would say it's a Netflix it season, but I would say <laughs> it has a feeling of this is how a season would end. What okay. it feels like to me is a 26 episode show they cut episodes out of. Oh, that's maybe worse. Yeah, in some ways, like it's it's. I don't think you'll be impressed. I will say that. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest. But like, I am a fickle bitch. That's for sure. And like the 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 middle episodes, the mid, the four isolated episodes are relatively standalone, and they're kind of based around Tila, a Cringer, and Adam, and a little bit of Ram Man uh, in the last okay. one. But it's like. It's building on character moments we haven't seen, especially for Ram Man. Oh. I felt like her her big moment should have been more like okay focus on it i don't think uh duncan gets really anything of note orco gets quite a bit of time and i, I don't mind that because like i said i like orco but mm. um also a lot of stock footage oh re- well i mean for the transformation I'll, I'll yeah but there's five transformations oh dear oh yeah that's true yeah because it's not just he man it's everybody and transforms there's also they? stock mm. footage attacks Oh. And these are long. Oh no. Uh, to the point where like they all uh, transform in one episode and there's like Skeletor's on a, on the on the speaker. He's just like, "Well, that was certainly a long time." So it's it's clearly a cost-cutting measure, right? And, yeah, it's but, clearly there to to cut down on the amount of money that they spend yeah. for the the general animation. And and it really feels like they those lines are in there because they they're very well aware of how it looks, so they're they're just like, okay. "We're going to we're going to own this truth." For better or worse, I suppose. Is well, it? I suppose it's... And I don't know how I ever feel about that. Do you think... Do you like it when they do that? Or do you think it's a little bit... As the kids would say, cringy when they kind um, of acknowledge... It can the be. Of the it show. depends on the show. It depends on the show. Skeletor's, do- probably, Skeletor's doing it, it so it works in this case, I think. It probably depends on the, the issues as well. Like, maybe mm. if it's like a writing criticism... Maybe yeah, that's yeah. not a good thing that you should point out. Maybe if it's an animation thing because of budget, maybe it's okay. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um... Uh, one thing, like, and then, but then, like, in the last two episodes, you have five stock transformations, right? Oh, woof. And then you have another three, because oh. Lin, Lin, Trapjaw, and Beastman all get theirs to go from the new designs into the classic designs. Hmm. And I will say, theirs are the best ones in the show. The actual transformations for Trapjaw, Evelyn, and Beastman are fan-fucking-tastic. Okay. Uh, Trap, like... Beastman kind of like his base body like turns to stone and the cla- and like at more an orange monstrous beastman erupts out of it. Yeah, that sounds good. Or like Trapjaw kind of like reforms around his own head. Uh Evil Lynn's really makes me think of Devil Man Lady. Hmm. Um but it's Devil like Devil Lady Man. Devil Lady Man. But like it's just a lot of time spent like that's about I would say it's close to five minutes of stock footage in that episode. Oh. And that's before they introduce new stock footage of team attacks. Right. So it's a bit much. It's a bit much for me. Um, At the moment, I'd say it's above average, but it's a six. And I think, like I said, Netflix is going to have a problem going forward. Netflix shows the binge thing works against it, in my opinion, because this is not good enough to be super memorable over a short period of time. This will fade Mm. from discourse for... Netflix shows are designed to get viewers in that in that first week, and then be forgotten about until the next season come out. 
Yeah, that's and how it always feels. Yeah. I think when you're dealing with some, and I think that's one of the reasons they really do like lean into nostalgia shows at the moment, because they're not establishing new nostalgia. I think, and I think like they, I don't see a lot of Netflix show original concepts gaining a big fan base because they're not having because like one of the things that really does grow a fan base is like every week you come back to it, it stays in your head for weeks and weeks and months a year of the year and that makes you like really invest in it over a long period of time if you watch it all in 10 minutes or you know it's a it's like watching a movie that movie mm. has to be really good to stick with you As, and especially when you're young um yeah and like they can watch it on repeat sure but like i think it's go i don't i don't think it helps kids um but yeah anyway um did I do anything else of note? There was something in my head, and I said I didn't want to forget it. Oh, um, I watched the first episode of Iron-Blooded Orphans. Oh, okay. Uh, which I didn't realize this. Apart from the Build series, there hasn't been another... There hasn't been a serious Gundam series in seven years because of the... Like, no. Iron-Blooded was the last one. Yeah, uh, the rest of the, the kind of serious stuff has all been movie-based, yeah. unfortunately. And yeah. Then, I like I'll take rewrites quite serious, but it's also got a talking dog man. So yeah, yeah. Who, who dies I, horribly? I think, to be fair, I think if it's based on the rewrite, uh, the 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 build divers fighters series, uh, probably class is less serious than um, war orphans. Um, yeah, no fighting Re- rewrite. War. Rewrite is like a classic superhero story where oh no, we got an entire city wiped off the face of the planet. But that's like mm-hmm. classic superhero stuff. This, like it's not like oh no, we've created monsters of children. Yep. Um, animation is very good. Mm, oh yeah, like yeah. very, very high quality. Early days, so I don't really have any opinions on the characters yet, except for the fact it really doesn't feel like the show's about Mikazuki so far. No, unfortunately, and... that's how the entire series feels, and yet it will focus on him, and you're like, but no, what he's which shit is he's kind boring. of boring, which is kind of like for me, I am always worried about the the Final Fantasy Vaughn effect. Or just like, yes, yeah. oh, we needed our young, attractive child protagonist. We didn't write yeah. the show to include him. We were told to include him. M- Mizuki doesn't really ever change. Um, I don't think he does. Maybe the, maybe he'll surprise you, but I never felt yeah. he did anything dramatic. It's the Ogre show. It's all about all- Ogre. Yeah, like he definitely seems He's to be really central. good. He's really interesting. Um, but like Barbados is there. Probably should have been Orcus piloting there. Barbados. But um... Barbados is there so far, not doing much, but like I'm kind of hoping this weird hang up I have with the Barbados will pass now because, like, mm-hmm. I've always said, the Barbados, especially the Lupus Rex, is something I should love. Mm-hmm. And I never have. So I'm hoping watching the show, it'll get invested. Maybe they'll go to, to the lengths to give the Barbados a sense of self, you know, like, you know, to give, you know, like the it's more than a weapon to me kind of thing. Um,. I I've seen pictures of like I've and I've seen toys that have this big like eye laser effect which I'm very curious about. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, like I'm going to watch it and like I said the animation is very very good. Oh yes, oh yes, it's a pretty um, show. So hopefully I'll have a few more episodes watched in the week. Um oh, and I've um started building the F90 unit 2. Oh my god. Um, I thought so, I saw like I saw, I saw this purple boy pop up on yeah. your street on your on your Twitter feed. I was like hmm is that an F ninety of some description? That's mm. is that an e hobby one as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or like, Bandai, right? Ooh, but um, Mickey. purple and yeah, like it's a. Mickey. I've got the upper body built so far. Not super complicated, um, but enjoyable. Okay. Uh, no poly caps at all. Uh, all all um built in plastic joints and stuff like that. So it's solid as a rock. Um, there's been some painting, but it hasn't needed a lot. hasn't Has needed panel lining though. Um. But yeah, no, I'm liking it so far, and I'm liking it enough that I am kind of looking at some of the oh, add-on no. kits. No, not there's only usually just like one of the good upgrade kits yeah. in a lot of those packs. I find at least the, like the F90. Like for anyone who doesn't know, the F90 is now na- it, like it's a precursor to the F91, which was a terrible Gundam film. One of the worst. It should have been the series. It's a hundred percent should have been the series. So should have been because they took what seemed like an okay idea and fucked it up. And now I don't. It's weird. We we basically, Mikey. I I feel that the F ninety one movie actually wasn't made in this dimension. It came from a dimension where there was a full uh, animated series, and that was the compilation movie. Yeah, yeah. That's the only way it makes sense. Like the terrible (laughs) compilation movie that they put together. Yes. 
Um, it happens. Yeah. And because of that, my crossbone still hasn't been adapted. And, I, <laughs> and, and they've even announced a new serious Gundam show. Um, something about Mars. Have they? Uh, yeah. Um, they've, oh, oh, Gundam's doing a lot of, like, they had a big announcement during the week. They're doing, I think, another movie and something What's based. Movie? Is, still... is it a Hathaway one? No, it's based in something to do with an island. Something island, and it's got like in the Amaro times, and then oh, of course it's yeah. Amaro times. But there's a new series. There's film. a new um. There's a new t- TV show as well, like um, which has a really weird name. It's not named after a Gundam. Mm-hmm. Um, it's name. It's uh, I'm, I'm not going to look it up because I can't be arsed. But um, so yeah, but the F ninety in in fiction is like the precursor to the F ninety one, and it's a modular. Uh, suit whereby there's lots of armor packs and armor upgrades you can get for it um, that totally, do... totally not to sell more model kits yeah shows, absolutely not no, although no, no, no. <laughs> I, I will say like when they came up with this at least like this was when they never thought they were going to get an f90 kit that's true that's so true. it was uh, during a conceptual era like lots of this stuff never even appeared in mangas um but um so now got uh the F90, which was one of the only original uh, premium Bandai kits, as in there's not a mass release version, um, mm. now has a bunch of add-on sets as well for it. And some are okay, some aren't. Most would clash horribly with the purple suit. Um, but uh, if you repainted them, mm. Mm, uh, mm. could work. But yeah, um, oh, I haven't had to use any stickers. There's one, there was a white one for the shield, and I decided I'm just going to leave the shield in blue plastic. Okay. Because I, my white will not go on there very well. It will end up looking really streaky on a big flat surface like that. And honestly, yeah, it looks. probably have to airbrush it, I'm guessing, yeah. to get it on nice. And honestly, it looks perfectly fine. Oh, wow. Look so, at Mikey. Yeah. So I'm not going to bother. And, and like, some of the kits are kind of like we're going to stick a rocket onto the front of the f90 <laughs> um and yeah, one one I of the hate that one one of the kits is turn the f90 into the f91 that's such a weird kit that's weird it's a weird thing it's not atrocious aesthetically it's just but like it's buy weird. an f91 gundam at that point yeah right? yeah yeah um so yeah so i'm, I'm enjoying that uh, anyway that's me for the week andy what about you uh, not a huge amount. Uh, I got my uh, Origins uh, Master of the Universe Scareglow in because uh, he came back into stock. He's fun. Uh, you know, he's the same book as the other guys, but he glows in the dark with a skeleton head. Um, I definitely find that some of the knee joints on uh, these figures could be a little bit on the tighter side. They have like um, slightly soft detents. Mm. So there is a little bit of give sometimes between the, the, the joints between one uh, detent and the next, which can... Like, depending on the pose you put them in. And some of the figures, Scareglow especially, uh, if you haven't tried to stand up straight, uh, the the joints will kind of make him kind of tilt backwards a little mm. bit, which is kind of a shame. I think it's mainly because he's got a big old plastic cape. Uh, so that's definitely, like, strangling him and pulling him backwards most of the time. I assume that's the reason, at least. Uh, otherwise, it's just been uh, a lot of walk. Um, I, I uh, put out uh, the png vtuber model that i'm now using on my twitch yeah. channel so i'm now a zombie boy uh so i've been playing with that and playing just more jurassic world evolution and uh the witcher who watches oh I, i've uh, i think i've nearly done the main story mikey for the witcher oh cool where, where what's the last thing you did oh fuck um i think i'm doing the final preparations at the moment i think it's called so the last thing i did was i i killed radovid is that his name yeah uh, and uh, I had to kill my boy Dijkstra, which I wasn't happy about. I was like, no, I like Dijkstra. He was such a lad. He was such a <laughs> little bitchy boy with all of his little back backstabs at me and little, little snide comments. I was like, mm. I didn't want to kill him. I felt really bad, but he, he wanted to be a bad man. And I was like, no. Not a bad man. Don't do it. Yeah, don't don't be a bad man. Um, and what was the... Oh, I think the, the very last part that I did was I was going around uh, and I helped Siri steal some horses for her caravan friends oh yeah the weird elves yeah which felt really out of character for yeah. uh, jerry to do do you it's like, ah. do you enjoy the fact that clearly series had an entire life and story that you know nothing about but the, but the story do, is acting like you because is... the story is acting like you do know it well to be fair the story acts like i played the witcher one too so the series <laughs> having this uh, life that I don't know about is is just like well it's just one more tick on the thing of 
I I guess I'll shrug. You, you know when you change Uma into that elf? Yeah. And all the characters are like, oh, it's this guy. My reaction was just, I, who are you? I don't know who you are. Siri what is frustrates this? the bejeebus out of me in that game. Okay. Because the game is constantly going, oh, wow, Siri, you're such an important part of my life. Mm, that's for, true, yeah. For stuff that happened in books that were published before any of the games. Oh, Siri, you have godlike superpowers. Yeah, she can teleport to other worlds. She talks about these other worlds. I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. No, Are we no, going to go to the one? No, no, no because I don't think they no. even exist in the books. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> like, because the books were t- t- took place before she did any of this shit. And it was all like, and it, but it like, I was so confused about why Siri mattered for so long. And I'm, I really. I still don't, don't. kind of know. There's something yeah. about her teleporting god blood abilities that yeah. people want for some reason. I don't know why they also, want it. Also, apparently, it's her fault we get the bubonic plague. Because the, the disease that goes on in the Witcher world that everyone dies of. Oh, that's the, pl- the bubonic plague. Yeah, but it's not called that. Ah. Like, she teleports to our world and brings oh, the bubonic it- flea. Is that the 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 plague that Kira, the the alchemist lady who you can pork, uh, is trying to cure? Maybe I'll say. Okay, <laughs> but, uh, sure, why not? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, like I say, I've said, I think during the streams as well. Generally, I think I don't think the game is as good as people rated it to be. Mm. The, you, yeah, it, it, they're like, oh, you can just start on Witcher three. No, you can't. That, oh, you just read the books. I'm not paid to play a bloody game and read a fucking book inside a mm. game to learn about the backstories of these characters. It really, uh, really expects you to know who these characters are, what the backstories are. I don't know why Jerry lost his memory, but he did. And then, like, Triss seemingly took Something... advantage to have sex with him, which yeah. seems really dodgy. It, I, the way I, what I understand of it, he, she met him after he lost his memory. But so she like, was friends with Yen. No, there. She was friends with Yen, but she didn't know Geralt. Is what I is, what is the impression I got. But I think, but but like she, she didn't never, know Geralt, what? and she didn't know like she, you know, she went to the same like college as Yen, but they were like, it's like, oh, okay, I haven't seen you in years. Okay, I met this guy. And they see, I, like they seem to suggest a few times, uh, at least a, f- a few bits of dialogue, like. Triss and Yen are meant to be pretty close. It's like, oh, you fucking my think... my best friend or something like that is I... how it seemed to be implied. I don't know. It's weird, but like, I it is definitely, weird. as far as I'm aware from what reading I did, Trish didn't know who Geralt was. Okay. Which I suppose you could also say, like, I doubt Yen has many stable boyfriends in history. That, that's the problem, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, like, I, so, it's, it would be surprising if she never I mentioned do, I don't oh, think yeah. it's like Trish found Geralt knew who he was and said I've been wanting to do you for years I'm going to pretend that I don't know who you are I don't I definitely don't think that's the angle they're going for I, probably not that's how it comes across with the little <laughs> knowledge that they give you in the Witcher 3 that's how it came across to me I was like what the fuck especially because she knows he has amnesia I was like did she did she like no and she's just like haha I'm gonna have sex with my friend's <laughs> old boyfriend I think he, he gets amnesia I think because he got murdered with a pitchfork and then woke up in Avalon. They talk about him being part of these Red Riders as well and being part yeah. of the Wild Hunt and I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? What's no. this story? Yeah, this is all stuff like oh, okay, so you know the Wild Hunt. Yes. Cool. Could you give us a five minute catch up? Yeah, because they, they look like elves but they they they're not elves? Are no, they, they elves? They are elves. They're inter el they're interdimensional elves. Because right. they're going uh, but with... they're, are they different from the elves that are in like the, the yes, stripper bars? They're the okay. diff- because this Why? is something Why I are didn't they different? because they're because like they, they this is something I didn't realise until the very end of the game. The the species that live on this world came from other dimensions using rift portals. And okay. some are native, and I know that I think the dwarves and the gnomes and things are native. Okay. Humans aren't native. Elves aren't native. Trolls and stuff like that aren't native. So somehow, but a like they're different interdimensional beings invaded this world. Yeah, and, and, and populated on it. Or like there was like a, there was a big end of the world, end of the universe style event. Uh huh. And, and like the big winter, the big an evil winter, basically. And in order to escape it, they use magic to teleport to 
um, another world, or like, I think it was like, I thought it out, or like, oh, Portal started opening because of a magic confluence or something like that. Yeah, I, I think that was it. Portal started opening during a confluence. And then all these species came pouring in, like dragons came in as well. And they poured in, and then, like, some elves just became normal people, but then, like, another race of elves existed interdimensionally who were super evil, and they started, like, going from world to world, being jackasses. Mm -hmm. And it's all very confusing and really needed a really needs good setup. Or explanation, especially if you haven't read the books, which... Yep. I, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna and throw again, it out there. Probably not a lot of people had done before the Witcher games came out. Nope, I the definitely Witcher. not. Not Witcher three, which was the most pop, uh, popularized and the one given so many awards. Yep, and, and I the, still don't understand why. The author hates the games as well. He thinks video games are a <laughs> terrible medium. And I, I well, I, he did until he realized how much money no, he no, could get from he, him. He he still says it, and he says like, what his big his biggest hope is to write a book that completely wipes the games from canon. I mean. So I would say the stories, uh, the 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 games have a lot of issue with the storytelling, so I wouldn't yeah. be against it. No, but I don't know if he's any good as a writer. So well, I, that's, I that's, that's also I a fair point. I haven't read any of the Witcher books. Um, yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah. All I'll say is like the vampire DLC is much better written. Is that the the sec that's the that's the one where you go to a new land, isn't it? Because yeah. I've, I've I've done some of the the second ones, which is just like run around these areas and pick up some extra extra quests here and there, but they're very much side missions. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, that I'm one right. is people like that one, and I don't. I'm not. Um, what's the main thrust of that one? Because it just seems um, to be run around and pick up some extra like mini side quests that have the some devil. story to them. For want of a better term, the devil. The devil is oh. the devil and immortality. Um, and I don't that's think the main right. one then is it yeah um but the okay. vampire dlc is about well vampires and i think it's like it it, it makes the very wise uh, decision of including an endearing secondary character who is with you all the fucking time oh that's nice yeah because there is none of that for jerry yep i remember when spoilers vesemir went and i was just like okay <laughs> i didn't care i don't know who vesemir is for the most part um, he's just an old man <laughs> yeah i i i think I think he matters because he's like I, he seems to did he rear Geralt I think so I think he was his teacher it seems to suggest he was his teacher also, I guess kind of pseudo witcher father figure does kind Geralt of something they never really established for me very well does Geralt believe the whole we don't have emotion bullshit I don't know because it, it, it doesn't seem like it seems like they do have emotion yeah they seem perfectly especially, especially when you have Lambert or Lambert yeah. or whatever his fucking the other guys is. are he's all a, like he's a cock by the way yeah. I don't like him they're all like really like up front very emotional like I think it's it always try it strikes me like it's not Geralt it's like it, it's not some um, witchers who like deadpan jerks it's Geralt. Yes, especially it, it's uh, especially Geralt. Yeah, who it, isn't really that that because he really loves Siri clearly. Yeah, and he's very like if you play him like as like good guy Geralt, he's like super emotional. Like I'll always do the right thing and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Yep. To be fair, I didn't feel like I was. You mentioned that it, it seemed like it was forcing you down the 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 Yen Road. Uh, the only one that the only reason I felt forced down the Yen Road was because the the Twitch chat was like, "Go to the end, go to the end." Did, the oh, problem is none of the women really the I thing, thought were that good. I thought I, all of them were kind of awful in yeah, different but ways. The way I would say, like, you, it, you'll feel it with the Yen Road if you tried to go down the other roads. Oh, really? Okay. Because it's they feel so unnatural. Okay. Like they they do not feel like narratively. And like if you'd been on the boat and then Yen says like, "Well, we lifted the spell. Do you still love me?" And you pick no. It feels so fucking forced. <laughs> like, really poorly done, in my opinion. Like, it's not one of those things where, like, every romance option seems legitimate. No, 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 mm. no, no. No, it's just, like, the, the the books are about Yen. The story's about Yen. We're, we just put in options because we were told we had to put in options. Well, I imagine they did it, uh, Triss, in the, in the other ones because they didn't want to touch the Yen stuff. Yeah, probably. So they actually. had to give him a, a female um, person to pork, so I'm <laughs> guessing that's probably the reason for those ones. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, which a lot of issues, and I I hate the combat. I hate it. I hate it. You really? I didn't hate it. I, I hate the combat. I, I hate I, I, just pressing X. 
and I, that's I all that really is. I really don't like it. I really find it weird when I see reviews from when it came out that said the combat was innovative, innovative and clever. And I, I'm just like, I have no you idea know, what they were talking. about. Do you know about? what did like, like, because Spider Man has basically one button, press a button, you punch. It's but got like Flash, though, it's, it's got, got something. It's like a Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. You press one button, but it's got style to it. Yeah, and like, oh, okay, we've added in extra things like more gadgets, and the gadgets do way more than Geralt's magic does. Oh, a hundred percent. And like Mag- you, is you have to be boring. always watching the screen <laughs> to get the most out of every bit of action you can do, and like, mm-hmm. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> well, the Spider-Man stuff is just the Batman concept. Yeah, G- Gerald, uh, the the Witcher is not that because you can only parry humans, mm. and you can only parry some humans. If they have a big weapon like an axe, you can't parry that. And if they have a shield, you have to parry them. There's nothing else you can really do against them. Mm. It's like uh, those. The, the the big weapons people and the shield people are there specifically to stop you just pressing X and swiping through everything really quickly. There's no other reason that they're there as far as I'm concerned because otherwise mm. you just press X and you go through everyone. You press B to dodge left and right a little bit and then that's, that's about it. You throw in some magic here and there. You won't really use uh, any of them to a huge degree. You, you might use push. You, you use, you'll abuse Quen yeah. Because otherwise you die very quickly. Yeah, I always abuse Quen. Yeah. And I hate the soft level caps as well that the game is riddled with. It gives you so many quests, but at a certain level that goes 5 XP or 1 XP for mm. completing them because you're uh, too high of a level and it doesn't want you to keep leveling up too high. Mm-hmm. And the way the story progresses is terrible. It is legitimately terrible. I would have cut out all of the dandelion stuff. All of it. Yeah, it's weird because I know Dandelion's a big character in the fiction and he yeah. doesn't feel it in this game. No, I definitely think the um, the Bloody Baron stuff... W- I mean, it's this, it's effectively the same quest. You either pick Bloody Baron or you do Dandelion, but you have mm. to do both of them. I'd say the, the Bloody Baron stuff's way more interesting because you get the witches and you get that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, and I actually felt connected to the Bloody Baron. Um, I think he's probably one of the better characters in the game. And then Dandelion is, we just talk about Dandelion. It's, do you know who Dandelion is? Not really. You have to care about him because he was in a previous game, so you know who he is already. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck Dandelion is. I don't give a fuck about him. Why is there you know? a dwarf? Where did this dwarf come from? Yeah, he's cool. Zoltan, yeah, he's I cool. like. I, don't I know like who him. He is, though. I have no idea who he is. No. He's just a dude who apparently we're friends with. It's like, okay, that's, that's cool. Mm. Generic dwarf character, I suppose. Yeah, from, kind of like. From have fantasy. you heard of a Have you heard of a dwarf stereotype, sir? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's cool and he's fun to be with, but it's it's just like he's dwarf. Have dwarf. Did we get a backstory to him? No, no. I don't know what his dreams are apart from playing cards. Something about a bird, I think, at one point. Yeah, there's an owl, which I think I have to save. I think that's one of my final preparation I, missions. Also, something I don't think they did enough with was the whole like witchers don't kill intelligent creatures. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, because you kill so many people and so many things yes. that don't deserve to be killed, and you always have the option to kill. Yes. But because the story is mostly on rails, like you playing Geralt who kills every troll he sees. Oh, I never did that. I couldn't. I like the troll. The troll yeah, is no. the ugly dog of the world. Yeah, but like if you had, it makes could, no yeah. difference. Oh, no, I bet. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's weird. No. Who would kill a troll though? Unless they're like, unless there's no way to like calm them down. Who would kill a troll by choice? I mean, I just feel sorry for them. There's a weird bit them. where you, like your all the ice trolls keep like they're just generic enemies. Yeah, but... yeah, the ice trolls are just assholes for some yeah. reason. Um, rock but... trolls seem to be fine. Yeah, but it's just weird. It's weird to me how they structure that. And just like, why not make that a big deal then? Like, have a dragon that's intelligent. And like, I could I could accept dragons not being intelligent because you could no just they are be like, they are in, oh they in, are oh, in which oh. in the Witcher universe they're fully intelligent sapiens I, and like I, one I of the rules they is were just animals nope you know? one of the like wyverns are just animals but okay um one of the rules because I did some reading around is that witchers don't kill dragons <laughs> that's so not what, true but, not but in like Witcher three <laughs> yeah but like you kill so many people in that who are clearly intelligent why don't you make an like I don't want to kill this dragon, but he's like insulting my mother. What do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't or think la- you or, ever talk to a dragon, do you? No, as far as I know, there are none in the games. Oh, okay. So, as, as far as I know, because of course, 
because I've only got the one. System. Oh, that's right. Yeah, played... there are wyverns and cockatrices and things yeah. like that. Not actually dragon dragons. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I but I because I've never played in any of the other systems. I've not played the other two games, so I don't fucking know. Yeah, yeah. And after playing this one, I don't really want to play. No, <laughs> no. I don't. I, here's get the thing, though. It sounds like I hate the game. I don't hate no. it. I just don't think it's great. Like it, it doesn't leave. Like I, it's a weird thing. It's kind of similar to Horizon Zero Dawn, except I'm not angry at this game. <laughs> like I got angry at Horizon Zero Dawn for its storytelling. Mm. Like for having because Horizon Zero Dawn has fantastic gameplay. Oh, okay. And a garbage storytelling mo- motif. Like, not mm. bad storytelling elements when you get to them. Right. But a... Oh, so badly handles how the story is laid out. And and I just, like, give me that na- frustration. Just like, I've been here for ten minutes and nothing's f- fucking happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go kill a robot T-Rex because it's the only thing I get satisfaction from. <laughs> and murdering like, the animal wildlife well yeah. robot wildlife uh, I, like basically I got I had that with Witcher 3 we're just like I'm gonna use the DLC to get over leveled and then kill the big bad super boss of the first game and do it in <laughs> 10 seconds I thought the, um, the the boss with the the, the, the mace and the shield mm. and I thought oh this is gonna be a challenge because previously I'd fought like the three witches at once and I was like Oh, it's, it, I beat them second time round because I didn't know what was going on, and they get a cheap hit straight away. We we can't actually move. I was like, oh, this one's going to be a challenge. He's a big man. He's got a big club, and I just danced left and right and killed him first time. I was like, oh, that was easy. Mm. It was on the second hardest difficulty, and I just slapped through him. Wait oh. until you do the final boss. Is he easy and shitty as well? Uh, again, the boss for the vampire game uh, DLC much much better. Okay, so yeah, he's he's another sh- shitty boss. Okay. I don't feel any of the bosses have been well. I mean, all the all the encounters. I like are all I the like same. the Griffin fight. Which one? The first one, where you just the fight. very first one. Yep, because it's the first fight where you're fighting anything that's actually a threat. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, until you realize to just quen and then just keep dancing left and right, hit it a few times, just yep. and then quen and quen. hit it a few times and quen quen. Did you know you can quen? Yeah, and then if you really want, you can get a little bit spicy and maybe add in a potion. Doesn't really do anything apart from increase your number damage. That's yep. about it. I like to quen because if I don't, I die. Yeah, because you take one hit and you die. It's like, oh well, if you're playing on a lower difficulty, you wouldn't. It's like, okay, so I'll I'll take three or four hits. No, and then die. I was here's the thing. I was playing on hard. It's still not a hard game. No, it's no, as long as you're dodging, that's fine. Yeah. It's the only times I I find that I die is like if I'm stupid and uh, because the controls are kind of clunky, I'll launch myself off a ledge, mm. which uh, has happened once or twice. Or if I'm being uh, ganked by three or four different enemies and I get stun locked, yep. which has happened a few times. There's a few times where uh, like I was chasing after um, someone to try and find some treasure. And she was like, oh, there's a ghost in my house. I went to her house and there were two witch hunters. One of them hit me with a stun lock move, then the other one hit me with again a stun lock move, and then I just died in two more hits. I was like, so I couldn't do anything. Yeah, nothing I could do. Yep. Nothing, nothing more fun than being told, "Oh, you're not allowed to play now." Yeah, that's a that's a great mechanic. You know what has really good fighting mechanics, Mikey? Zombies. Devil May Cry Five. It does. It's a very good game. It's an incredibly well-made fighting game. Where someone said, like, oh, you fucked it up, did you? Oh, well, we don't want to fuck it up. Don't uh, worry. When you, you, people were playing DMC after playing Witcher 3, and they were all very sad, and they just felt a gentle hand on their shoulder. It'll be all right. <laughs> and if you want to go crazy and you have a PlayStation 5 uh, played on Dark Knight mode, <laughs> when there's just, like, 5 billion enemies on screen, and you go, oh, God. <laughs> now, if you get still locked there, right, you go, okay, fair enough, there's, like... 10 or 20 enemies all attacking me at once. Okay, fair enough. Mm-mm. But otherwise, you can still handle them quite well. Because the game's just well made, even when it's gone crazy. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I did in the week. Uh, apart from bitching about The Witcher 3 and all my issues with it, even though I still haven't finished it. Uh, these will not be uh, changed. My opinion on it, I'm sure, won't change by the time I finish it. I think you this maybe, is just locked in. Maybe you'll love it. I won't. I won't. Maybe um, you'll love it. Yeah, but apart from that, it's just been a lot of uh, stressful work. So that's uh, that's uh, 
been about it for me, I'm afraid. Uh, nothing desperately interesting, but that's how it does sometimes. Well, mm. most, I say sometimes. <laughs> Realistically, it's most of the time for me. Ah, uh, Mikey, where can people find you on the internet if you want them to? Uh, you can find me on Twitter with Irish Paleo, and if you want to send us any feedback or anything, you can send it on the moonbase2 at gmail.com. Do we um, have any? Not today. I'll need to check because I'm not sure. Let me check. I think we got a few little messages on the Facebook, but I don't think I have uh, anything massoof. But let me not, just have a little tweet. massage. Do. Oh, I finally got the, the comic show up. So that's good. Yay! We don't need to get a comic show up for this. You month. also reinvented yourself. Mildly. That's true. I mentioned that. I did mention that. But earlier. people didn't get the context. They just think you changed the name. Andy's a zombie now. I am. Yeah. Didn't I? I think I said uh, I did a PNG tuber model. No, you didn't. I think I did. No, you didn't. Send us a message, people. Did I t- uh, talk about the PNG uh, tuba model? Either way, I, it's on Twitch now. Uh, I'm now a zombie. Hello. Zombie. That's how it be. Uh, so we got a message from Christoph Carlson. Got two, in fact. Uh, so did you know Simon Furman wrote a new Battletoads uh, comic? And it's free. Uh, it has uh, the fell of an average... Sa- I guess the feel of an average Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, but the part of the origin story was amusing to me as a Battletoad fan. What am I a sucker for TMNT wannabes? I did not know. Battle, Battletoads thing? No, I can honestly mm-hmm. say. Same. I wouldn't say Battletoads ever interested me outside of like playing them um, illegally at school on an emulator instead mm. of working. Um, they, I, I never had the, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo to play them, but I thought they were all right. I preferred Turtles. I was actually thinking this week, uh, I was wondering why Turtles never grabbed me, because I was the right age and demographic for the Turtles oh, when I they came obsessed. out in the 90s. I was obsessed. I was, I, was, I, I, I was never that big into Turtles. I, I had a few a, Turtles toys, but not a uh, lot. I was obsessed enough. until about early 90s, and then I just dropped completely out of it. And I know like Turtles went on to like 11 seasons. And I, I went on for ages. Yeah. I have not seen anything past like 4 to 5th. I remember I saw some episodes on Sky One. Um, th- this was not like me actively going out to watch them, but like before school, where the turtles would transform into giant mutant version, mutated versions of themselves, so they kind of Hulk up. And I mm. thought that was pretty cool. Otherwise, no, no, I never really, never really watched it, and did wonder why because that, you know, that should have been my He Man, my Transformers, yeah. but it never yeah. was Transformers. Was my Transformers because <laughs> I got <laughs> and He Man was ironically your He Man. Yeah, uh, well, actually, no, because the only He-Man thing I had back then was... uh, I had a few toys, not a huge amount. Mm. uh, And the only media I saw was uh, Secret of the Sword, part one, two, and three. I don't... Into the movie, that was it. (laughs) The only one I saw was the one where a cat lady wanted to have sex with Battle Cat. Oh, I watched that episode this week. Yeah, the Grimalkin. (laughs) Yeah. Not not a bad episode, but it's... It is, like, really... Well, it's slightly uncomfortable to watch this lady basically really want to have sex with Battlecat. It's it's when you realize, like, and so, in 10 to 15 years' time, you'll learn what furries are. Yeah, 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 it's one of those things that was Katarina, which was her name, Mm. uh, was Katarina the the, the juice uh, that lubed the machine for some people back then? Perhaps. Not my juice. Yeah. Uh, the other part of the, the message that Christoph sent was, speaking of cartoons, new 3D, uh, 3D He-Man was off to a good start. Hope this toy line makes it into the supermarkets over here in Europe before it's over. <laughs> ah, uh, 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 uh. Distribution. Uh, I doubt we'll make it into the supermarkets. I think if if it does come to the, the UK area, uh, mm. it would only be in Smith's, and that's maybe... Maybe. maybe I wouldn't hold your breath though. Definitely. I maybe. don't know what distribution of toys is like in Europe generally, but I know. Here I hear. It's not the best. I hear it's as bad. Is that as bad? I would see. I would have thought at least for anything He Man related, Germany would get it. I hear. I, I know Germans really like He Man. Yeah. Not as much as like um, hmm. Mexico. I think Mexico is the the like hardcore He Man fans. And Mexico. I think maybe Spain. Um, uh, from what I understand, I know like Mexico is. Germany has bad toy distribution. Ah, oh, damn! Sorry. Actually, when I was in, um, I was in France a couple of years ago, and they had atrocious toy distribution. I was, I went yeah. looking, and I was just like, "What's going on? Why can't I find anything?" Pain. That's it. Pain. Pain. Pickle. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, uh, you said where people can find you, haven't you, Mikey? Yep. All right, you can find me on Twitter at cctfw. 
on YouTube as Cobra Commander TFW. You can find me on uh, Twitch as uh, CCTFW, but that might be changing at some point because I'll have to change my name to Decayed Andy. So get ready for no that. Way. At the oh, moment, no it's, it's still CCTFW. Oh, no but... That's right. Uh, and you can find us on patreon.com slash moonbase2. And if you do $2 each month, you get the extended version of From the Files to Teletron 2. And uh, you also get the Moonbase Woo Woo, which we need to do for this month at some point, where we talk about non transformary things in more detail. More yeah, detail, you're saying. That's right, son. Um, uh, oh, ccbunker.weebly.com. You can go there, too. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, so, thank you, Mikey, for joining me this week. Uh... Until next week, everybody, thanks for coming on by, and we will catch you next time. Fight the power. Row, row. You are now leaving Moonbase.